lot of kids don't get a chance to talk to actual NBA players. players, players, players. We're just trying to change the roles and do something different. different, different. Give them more than what we have. How does it feel to be black? The ball is secondary. Walk away from this place with something. Apply some of the stuff in their life, help the next person. You all have made it now to the birth of the movement. Go on the back of the bus. I need that seat now. It's made me mad. Huh? That's how I feel to be black. Here we are. It's March. Some college teams are trying to get a bid into the tournament. Others are gearing up for deep runs. And DraftKings is giving all customers a free shot at $100,000 in total prizes. Download the DraftKings app. Head to their free-to-play pool page and enter DraftKings' free $100,000 tournament seating pool. Make your picks for who you think is going to get a ticket into March's biggest tournament. And if you have the most answers correct, you win. Easy. If you're not in the ball, golf's fifth major is this weekend in Florida where DraftKings will have even more money up for grabs. DraftKings is safe, secure, and reliable, so you can deposit and withdraw your funds at your convenience. Download the DraftKings app now and use promo code SMOKE to get a free shot at a share of $100,000 in total prizes with DraftKings Tournament Seating Pool. That's promo code SMOKE to get a free shot at $100,000 in prizes only at DraftKings. Eligibility restrictions apply. See DraftKings.com for details. Welcome back, man. Season two of All the Smoke. We got a real special guest. What's up with your Brody with the virtual handshake? I'm going to tell y'all something that I never told nobody. I want All the Smoke. Welcome back to a very special Legends edition of All the Smoke. Jack, what's up with you? Man, I'm good, man. I'm happy today, man. This, this is some real Bay Area yeah. business today, man. Hey, we, we, got, we got some real shit today, Jack. We got two legends, man. Been in the game over 35 years each and still pushing. Man, welcome to the show, E40 and Too Short. We appreciate y'all, man. Man, legends, man. Appreciate y'all. What's up? What's up? What's up? What's up? We appreciate y'all, bro. Thanks. It's an honor man. and pleasure to be on, your, on this platform. Man, we appreciate it. We, we heard they said, uh, we got short and 40. That's good. I was like, huh? Both of them? Same time? <laughs> what? Lock it in. Yes, sir. Oh, man. man, we appreciate y'all, man. So I'm going to get right to it. Mount Westmore. What's that mean? Talk to us. It's big. I see. I hear. Let them know, Short. <laughs> Explain that project. Uh, so Mount Westmore is, it is uh, Snoop Dogg, Ice Cube, E-40, mm, mm, and Too mm, Short. Mm, and we all came together to do a project. And it's not, it's, it's not an album. It's it's just a lot, a lot, a lot of music that it's probably going to be probably like three projects when it's all said and done. Dope. But the whole point of it is Four. we we do a lot of shows together. And every time we do a show, the show sells out. And basically, Ice Cube, E-40, E-40 and his manager ran it down to Ice Cube, E-40 and Ice Cube ran it down to me. We all called Snoop. Everybody's on board. And it's like, instead of like having some promoter book us to do a show, call our four agents and managers and stuff, we, we, we just came together like Voltron. And it's like, now we control the beast. You know what I mean? We, 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 can, we control everything. And then, and then instantly when we join forces, all these other doors start opening up. Like what... No matter what's going on in each one of our lives, business-wise, now we just opened up a whole new can of worms. Of what can we do as a partnership? So people have been saying, like, you guys are a super group. And we kind of, like, been like, nah, bro, we just really just a business, man. We just came together to, and, and make a whole lot of bread together. So, you know, give me your spin on it, Earl. You said it. You know, we, you know, we a little bit of everything. We wear many hats. Everybody play their position. You know, we, we are LLCs. You understand me? We are, and I, it, you know, sure don't like calling the super group, but that's that's just the word it is. It, it, we super, we a super group, man. You know, we you got two of the best. You understand me from Northern California, which is up top, and then you got two of the best from Southern California, which is uh, you know down south. You know Southern California. So, you know that's La La Land. You got the Yay area, and you got La La Land. You dig? Collide. And, uh, yeah, yeah, man. So we, you know, we put it together like the weather. You dig, and we and short might say we got three some three hours, but we got we got four of them things because every day we turning in new tr tracks. We ain't stopping. We ain't letting up, 
and it's just it's just what we do anyway you know especially during during the pandemic we got a little more time on our hand you feel me so we we got a lot of a lot of planning we all are doing uh we you know we we, we um we're perfecting our passion projects you know we got a lot going on and you know we ain't finna let grass grow under our feet man we're gonna keep it moving hello as you should during the pandemic, jack i know you caught that do we have a uh, yeah. a, a we we got a, a target date for the drop or for the drop for the first project uh just um, look out for like um look out for like some visuals man you know we got you know snoop's dog snoop dog's a superstar like a mega star the man got what 70 million or something on instagram or something but um you know uh ice cube is a filmmaker and he's real passionate about what the visuals of mount westmore are gonna look like so we, we in good hands man you know what i'm saying uh uh, we got E40 the hustler in the group. You know what I mean? Like, like every phone call is another, is another like business venture. Every time I pick up the phone with these dudes, they're like, man, hey, we, we got, on. hey, we speaking a bit. So we got, so we just pitched Snoop this business project, and his manager, White Boy Kev's like, yo, we need to pitch this to the whole uh, the Westmore group. So we got something waiting on deck for y'all too. So we are gonna bring it to you in about a week or so. It's something heavy. Exactly. Let's go. Some... Let's go. Yeah, I hope we do link up, man, because, uh, yep. you know. So 2020, um, obviously a year to forget. A lot of terrible shit happened. What did you guys take away from 2020? You know, what, what 2020 did was to some of the, not just, not us, because we, you know, us, a lot of us are re really close to our families, you know. and But it's some, it's, some, it's some people that work a lot and they travel and they're really not home with their family. I think what it did was brought cl families closer together where you know you can find, and I don't care if you're in the, in, the, in the ghetto or the suburbs, wherever you at, I think it brought a lot of people together. It brought the kids closer to their dads, their parents, mom, you know, the daughters closer to their mom, the, the sons closer to their dad, you know, a lot of cats don't even know how to, you know, take some, take a, take some nails and do the, and, 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 take a, um, a bent nail and, and straighten it out and reuse it again. You know, some people don't know how to cut grass. They may, they may have learned that in the last nine, 10 months, right. you know, dealing with the, <laughs> dealing with the pandemic. You dig what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. You, you know, some, some, some of the females, some of the little young ladies, they might not have knew how to cook them. Now they, they ain't there, you know, got, they Martha Stewart status now. <laughs> You ain't no telling that's what Jack told Ellen, you know, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And you know, you, you look at it like this too, man. So you got guys like us who, for years, uh, a lot of people are in the position that we're in. Like, uh, there was a, a steady income stream and, a you know, a, a large part of our careers were to travel around and perform for people. And that that brought in a lot of, a lot of income. So... You kick back and you get all this time and you know on one end you like i do feel like there's a lot of value in having more time to not be traveling around in the airports all the time hotels but then on the other side you're like man what am i gonna do about this paper that ain't coming in no more so if you're a real hustler you sit around and you know they said it was gonna be two weeks time out then it was gonna be a month we was gonna be back up and running april i'm, I'm sitting around going you know it's like may we ain't getting out this this pandemic I'm like, bro, we got to get on the grind, man. You know what I'm saying? So basically, when you lose all the distractions of what what life was with the airplanes all the time, got all these engagements, it's always like a red carpet event. Now I'm going to this 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 party, this club, this this, you know what I'm saying, listening party. It's just always it was always something every day all day and that kind of that whole socializing at the flyish restaurant every day, you know, all that kind of slowed down and all you got is time and you're like okay what am i gonna do at this time i'm a hustler it, I, you just start zoom meetings phone calls whatever it was you know and and and, it, and it's like whoa the whole a whole new world opened up that you know if you're a hustler you just adapt so I'm, i know it's a lot of people out here that ain't doing good through this a lot of people are thriving through this but i'm like if you're a hustler you're a hustler go for it just if you, you ain't if you ain't out there socializing get on clubhouse and socialize do something get it going there's definitely Keep it going. ways. There's definitely ways. That thing, you know, Jack and I have been blessed from that kind of standpoint. Obviously, he lost his brother George, but we've been able to hustle through the pandemic. You know, this is when we really, we kind of tried to strategize, like, yo, what, what do our fans need? 
in this pandemic. You know, we're used to shooting shows in Santa Monica and in, in New York. And then we got on this solo, this, this, this Zoom grind and been bringing people content. Because like you said, short, a lot of motherfuckers don't know what to do right now. They're confused. They're stuck. So we in here trying to encourage them, motivate them, and show them the way. You know what I mean? When, when it's a downtime, it's still time to hustle. You can still get out there and eat. And, it, you know, you, it is what you make it. With this whole push, you know, Jack was one the face of something this past summer that not only touched every state in the United States, but also 16 countries. Um, obviously, when he lost his brother, George Floyd, what, what was your guys' thinking? Because uh, you all have seen a lot uh, of, this, of this social justice movement and kind of this shift in power that, you know, our ancestors and, and, and all the great before us have been working on for so many years. But I'm I'm gonna go um uh, I'm gonna go like this, man. Me personally, um, I read a lot and I study history a lot, and I just try to like know, you know, people's stories, like what happened, and just knowing like the 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 the, the way we had to like dig in just to learn about slavery times, like it was nothing given to us in school or anything to educate us on this. And you got to grow up as a grown man and start reading and, and talking to people and, and learning about your people before you, like what, what went down. And then you hear about uh, black people got freed from slavery and they landed right in Jim Crow, which is was probably, some people say that was worse than slavery. You know what I mean? And we can go into detail what all that was, but it was a very bad situation. And then you got civil rights and you come out of it with all these freedoms but it keeps, I keep smelling Jim Crow. I keep smelling slavery. I keep like, you can't tell me, you can't tell me that uh, making up a bunch of laws and you know how to crack hit the hood and all this, all this stuff that, it, that ends up with mass incarceration with 2 million people in jail, mostly uh, black and brown people. And you're like, you can't tell me that that just ain't somebody Right after civil rights going, man, we got to keep this slavery thing going. Jim Crow is just a, a, Somehow, renew, a renewal of slavery. Somehow, so I'm, I'm like, bro, right. when I see when I see George Floyd and I see all the other incidents, and it's not just where people die. It's just you getting your ass kicked. You getting uh, trumped up charges. You getting harassed for no reason. And when I see that, man, I'm like, how much different can that be from Jim Crow? How much different can that be from slavery? And you going, oh, y'all free. You can go out. You can go to college. But I swear to God, man, the opportunities that came to us does not come to everybody I know. Absolutely. Everybody I came up with. Like, a lot of folks just didn't have a way out, man. You know what I'm saying? So we do get treated. I go in a room full of white people, and they show me love. And I go in it. In a room full of Asians, they show me love. I'm, I'm a celebrity, you know what I'm saying? You a ball player, they love us for what we do. But the same, my same, I had a twin brother who didn't rap, you know what I'm saying? And he stayed in the hood, he would get none of this, you know what I'm saying? So I feel like as much as as much progress we make, I still, you keep looking back, you keep looking back, the cameras are showing everybody now, and you keep seeing it, but when they wasn't showing cameras, it was happening. It was happening, bro, it's like it ain't never stopped happening, so... I'll say all that to say it ain't never stopped happening. It's still going. It's funny. It's funny you say that, Sean, because you're talking about the difference, and that's that's me and that's me and George Floyd. Grew up an hour away from each other, both athletes. But I just got we both growing up in the hood. We both dealing with the same stuff in the hood. I just got different different opportunities. If he would have had those opportunities, he probably would have made it too. You know what I'm saying? But he didn't, and, and and people don't understand. That's how easy things can happen. You know what I'm saying? A lot of people don't see. We don't get a chance to see nothing different from where we come from. All we all we know is what we see. So when we get an opportunity and take advantage of it, everybody don't get that same opportunity. And, and it's so much talent in the hood or where we come from. It's just the opportunities, man, they slim. And that's why we got to, you know, continue to speak on stuff because people say, like, we're out here using our voice, using our platform. How are you guys affected? You guys got money. You guys live behind gates. But just like Jack said, it could have been one bad move, one bad deal that we could have been a statistic instead of a statistic in a positive way. Like, we lucky. You guys wrapped your way. We hooped our way. We were the lucky ones, but we talk for all the people that don't have this platform or the opportunities that we've had because for us it's good, and we still see some shit. So, but we, like, like Short said, his brother really has seen some shit. His bro, you know what I mean? So it's just like it's not – there's still a long way to go, but I definitely feel like something is in the air right now. Like, like I said, for the first time in a long time, like they listening and they're seeing and they're feeling it. You know what I mean? And, and us coming together – it's huge. It's big. Understanding our importance 
as 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 one. You know what I mean? They have always tried to call us the minority to keep us in our place. But when we come together, we the majority. And we got to keep that power and flex that power. Right, maybe God is giving the earth a shampoo right now. We got to, you know, because it's it's different. It's, it's, it's different. I mean, it's like, I ain't going to even lie, bro. You know, dude had it out there with Make America Great Again. He It's like he tried to make America racist again. You know? That's my... That's hey, my, man, that's I do believe opinion. in... I believe in the youngsters, man. I believe that... Every time you got a new generation coming up, the the older generations look at them like, man, y'all don't know what y'all doing, man. Y'all, you know what I'm saying? We we humans, bro. We, you know what I'm saying? Especially uh, in our community, man. You know, we natural born survivors from day one. So I think that um, when uh, when you underestimate the youth, it just it just makes it even better for them, you know. Because remember remember when we was teenagers, we was young and. You try, you know, you, you get advice from other people, but you like, I know everything, and you're going for it, man. I think, uh, I think that everything is gonna be in good hands. We can't really try to understand. I can't try to understand what the youngsters' approach is gonna be to changing the world to what they want. But I really feel like the world is gonna change, and they finna make it their way. And you gotta like, some people got to get old and go away, and then it becomes the new thing. So I, I, I feel confident about where things is going in 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 life and hip hop and all that. I, mean, I just believe people will, you know, they're going to make it happen, bro. I think that the OGs need to embrace the youngsters instead of talking down about them and whatnot. You know what I'm saying? It's even in hip hop, mainly in hip hop. Like, you know what I mean? Some of them, this is something, you know, say for instance, they rap a certain way. That's, that's, that's what they've been hearing since they was a little baby. Cause you know, a lot, you know, 2003 was seven, uh, what? 18 years ago. 2003, 2004, like these cats is 17, 18, 19, 20, like they young. And that's how they, they grew up with a different ear than what we grew up on. Right. So, you know, you I just got to be open-minded, embrace them. Because a lot of a lot of youngsters, I, I, they want to they be laced up. They want you to sit down and give them some game. You know, they don't all think they know it all. They want to get some game. You know what I'm saying? Instead of just don't 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 just go just because you can't adapt to what they doing OG you know what I'm saying you can't you got to be a, you got to be versatile you know what I'm saying you got to learn how to you got to turn with the times or the times gonna turn on you and the way you got to do it is turn with it turn with the times by staying within your jurisdiction and within your envelope you can still be you but you still fit right in there with the youngsters and the OGs you dig what I'm saying find that happy medium. A make America great again really mean hate again as the signs of the time is looking like we late again. Yeah. And that and 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 that's, and that's and that's basically what it is. And and all the marches I've been to, and all the givebacks that I've been doing, I'm doing another one on MLK Day. It's all the youth. It's more youth than anybody. You know, you might you might get one or two elderly yeah. people out there still fighting and, and standing strong, but all the marches that I've led, it's been all the youth standing, man. And that's the only way they really gonna listen. The youth, the the future, they got to be the ones that's fighting. Everything we fighting for, we may not see the benefits from it, but that's they will. Our kids will. Our kids' kids will. So that's why it's important for us to lay that foundation. The 1980s in Oakland. The 1980s in Vallejo. Take me back to what the energy, the vibe was like, and when did y'all first hear about each other? The Valley Joe. <laughs> uh, I tell you what. So when I first, so you know, me being from Vallejo, I got family and cousins and all them all through, you know, through the town and whatnot. And so they would come down, you know, and on a weekend or you know one of the holidays or whenever, right? And they coming down and um, they like uh. Fody, you ain't up on my partner shout. <laughs> right? Well, yeah, I, was I told short this was like I was 14, like 14 and a half. You know what I'm saying? I was like 14. So what year was I don't know how I was when I was 14. Shoot, let me see. I graduated when I was 17. That was 85. So, so early 80s. Maybe 80, maybe 80, 82, 83, maybe. Yeah, I, you I've know, been doing it forever, they man, come forever. Down, and I'm in the town all the time because I'm over there staying. It's all summer. I'm I'm over my cousin them house. You know what I'm saying? All the weekends. I'm catching the Greyhound bus out there. You know what I'm saying? But short. You know, I, I was listening to a lot of hip hop, just like everybody else. But short was different, man. He was spitting that. He was spitting that game, man. That game that we could all relate to. You know, and um, you know, and he was in the thick of it. You know, the town. You know, he's in. He was in East Oakland, man. Well, you know what I'm saying? Where the game originated at, you know? 
And so, um, you know, so it's like you're listening to him and, you know, and I was like, you know what, man, that's I got to spit. I got to spit my my real life. You know, the situations that I've been around, been through, been, you know, seen, did, done or, you know, what I'm saying some of the folks, you know, I got to be a storyteller. I got to I got to spit my spit like that. You know, so I got to get creative. I got to, you know, what I'm saying and that's how that all unfolded, you know. Um, but Short was doing it, man, and here he is. Here he is right now. It's 2021, Spit, spit a whole lot of game to funky-ass beats. That's what we do. Funky-ass beats with a lot of shit talking in real, like, real logical-ass game. And the fast-forward on, you know, the young days when we was just, like, rappers in the streets, uh, there came a time where I was somewhere in Oakland learning how to be an independent label. I was learning from a guy named Dean Hodges, who had a label, uh, 75 Girls Records. And Dean took me under his wing and we was going to professional studios and making records and putting the shit out and taking it to the distributor and picking up the check. And you know what I'm saying? He was, I was just sitting there riding shotgun while he was doing the hustle. So, you know, I was like everywhere we went. I knew the names, knew the place, knew the location. I knew the whole routine. Earl was in Vallejo uh, getting the same game from his uncle St. Charles, who knew how to sell records independently, also, and told him how to do it. So, on two different, you know, we 30 miles apart, but we learning the same hustle. And then what makes it crazier is somewhere in the later 80s, what was it, like 87, 88, when, 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 when y'all start clicking up with the, with the crews and the street money and all that, was that the late 80s? Yeah. 80, so, these like niggas. 87, 88. So him and his folks when end I up met, tied when, up. When my, when my folks met, you know, your folks, like 87, you know what I mean? So we doing our rap hustle. Our families is getting street money, and we all, like, see each other, hang out and shit. We ain't even talking about your song this, your song that. We just hanging out. That's E-40, he rap. That's Too Short, he rap. That's Oakland nigga. I'm the Vallejo nigga. We just in a, in, a, in a group fucking with each other way back when. A lot, like, pushing around and... And we pull up in Vallejo, they pull up in Oakland, we, 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 we tight. And then, I mean, years went by, man. We as homies, years went by before we ever made a song. <laughs> like, for real. I know, that's a trip. But when we put that shit together, when we did that rapper's ball, it was all gas, no, it was all gas, no brake pads. Yeah, we wasn't stopping. We never stopped after that. It was like... Yeah, we probably time. got, man, we can't, we can't even count how many songs we did together. We probably got, I know it's better than 50, I don't know how many it is. Shit, we did a double album together with like fucking seventeen songs a piece on. I mean, seventeen songs on each album. Now, the, uh, now that was, was twenty eight. Twenty eight. I think that was twenty eight songs. Fourteen. fourteen. Twenty eight songs. Twenty eight songs. And what was that called? But I'm that saying, was, uh, I'm, history, mob music, and function music. Slapping. Yeah, the history, the history Channel. But if you uh, <laughs> if you add to them twenty eight, how many more songs we did, bro? It's, it's probably like sixty, seventy. I don't know. It's still counting. It's songs that's I like, forgot we did. Hey, that's like we ran a, a, a whole uh, NBA season together. <laughs> it's real. 72, 82 songs. But, hey, look, look, look at all these songs we doing. Look at all these songs we doing right now with that's Mount Westmore. You, st you we still are. doing it. Still doing Come it. Come on. That's dope. Hey, man. Hey, hey, Fody, uh Compare the, uh, the Warrior teams now compared to their Warrior team. <laughs> Oh man, I'm gonna tell you right now. When they was playing, it, I the, called it street ball. I, I'm talking hey. about the players <laughs> off the court, off the off the court, off the court, <laughs> hey. uh, off the court. But you know, these, you know, these two gentlemen we on the phone with right now. You know, they 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 a little hard headed. They hard headed. They, <laughs> <laughs> super hard headed. Very hard headed. And they all the way with the shit. They love to fight and shit. They was hard. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, bro, hey, 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 short, hey, short. We had the best time in the in in the town, man. Ever. When we was playing, I'm talking about. Ever. It it was like we won a championship already. Like the city embraced us like like no other, bro. Like I don't care if, how many championships they won in the in the, in the, in the last couple of years. Nobody rocked out like we rocked out when we was playing there in Golden State. Nobody. Not even, Man, close. Nah. Hey, Not even close. I remember seeing uh I remember seeing Steph Curry. He used to be like kinda 
He'd be kind of quiet, a little off to the side, looking like a little, looking like a little boy, <laughs> hanging out, hanging out with y'all. Hey, Steph, hey, but sneaky, we was though. in. Steph ain't Steph. Steph sneaky though. He gamed up. He be, he won them. Uh, he's a student of the game. He know how to fit. He Man. he know how to fit in wherever he go to if he needed to. Chameleon. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, niggas be in the club. Look, niggas be in the club looking like eleventh grader, man. <laughs> That's real. Hey, but I got a chance yeah. to really see it though, because to be able to play during the We Believe times and then go back in '17 when they won the ring, there was still so much. The players wanted to know what our team was like. The media still talked about our team. The fans still talked about the team. Like that team was just different. Like we, you could reach out and touch us. We would be in, 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 in the hood in Oakland. We would be in, in Fillmore across the bridge. Like we would really be in the spots on the corners. That was our name, games, Matt. Chilling. That was our uh, name. You know, they, they, that was our yeah, name. You know, they, they had uh, what, what they called uh, Steph and them? The, the Phil, we was the Filmo 5. Yeah, but the, yeah, we was the Filmo 5. Yeah, they was the, I think they was the Hamptons 5. We was the Filmo yeah. 5. <laughs> yeah, crazy. But it was just a lot of love from just what we did in, in that small amount of time. You know, if you think about it, hey, we, man, did, that, we when, did that shit in when, three months. When y'all knocked off Dallas, y'all, that was that was a championship for us. That was the chip. Hey, that everybody was, was like, man, hey, them boys really out there balling. You know what I'm saying? They was... out there really hard. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. it was, I, I, I took it like y'all was freestyling. Like y'all wasn't, it was no particular plan. We it was just, no, no plan. matter. Like it, it wasn't nothing planned out. It was just like, just go out there and ball. That's you know? It. No matter what year, no matter what year, whatever happened after that, no matter what chip, how many chips, how many trips to the chip. Niggas still wore them We Believe shirts. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Still wore them motherfuckers. Hey, so we, uh, we in the process of getting the, uh, getting the We Believe doc going, so we definitely going to need y'all to fuck with that. For sure. Let's rock and roll, baby. Tell soundtrack. Them. Soundtrack. Y'all, sound soundtrack. We got to have Mr. Ooh. Fab. You gotta have Mr. Fab on the soundtrack. Can't do can't do no We Believe documentary and have a soundtrack without Mr. Fab, dog, for yeah, sure. Yeah, but y'all three, oh, yes. that shit would be killer. Definitely. Killer, killer. Bring it, man. Definitely. Bring you know, the Fab love the Warriors, man. He, hey, man, he, I got. I, 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 I pick with him, but he, 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 you know what I'm saying? He's been at the Warriors games for many years. I just give him a hard time. You know, that's just what yep. I got to do to, to him. Hey, they be you arguing over who, like, okay, they got the name of 40 say, I'm front row 40. Front row Fab 40. say that, that long before 40 came with that, that he was already t calling himself front row Fabby. And then 40, like, nah, bro, I made. So they got a real thing going on. Who was front row first? <laughs> like, it, and it, it ain't even like joke. They, they like it's like serious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I got I got I got I, I got to send some love to uh, to, Fab, to, to, to Mr. <laughs> Fab Moms, man. His moms was, hey, man, was a loyal thing, fan. Man. She stayed at every. She was at every game. Yeah, uh, yeah. I, I I seen her before every game. She waited to after every game to speak to me, man. You rest know what I'm saying? Peace. I got rest in peace. Yeah, yeah a lot of love to Fab, to Mr. Fab's mom, She's man. I miss heart. her, man. Definitely, man. Hey, that new stadium ain't it ain't the it ain't the Oracle, man. It ain't. I no. went in there. It ain't. It ain't. It, it's missing that person that 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 that, or, that Oracle Arena was intimidating, man. They gotta make them tickets. They gotta. <laughs> it was in the mud. They gotta make them tickets cheaper. It, hey, look, look. It was look, always fun them, to us. Make, it was fun to us. It's business. It's business. But, but, but it's when business. It, when they got on that chip run, when the chip when the chips came in, that crowd turned into it was a it was like a problem, man. For it the other business. people, it was a problem. They lost it, so we had like the real die hard because the at the keep it real the, the the tickets were cheaper. Like you can get into the game and bring your family back when we was running in oh six oh seven and oh eight. You know now it turned into a business where they had the highest courtside price in the league at one point, and then they go over to San Francisco and that's straight corporate. That's all that shit was for, you know what I mean? So the fans over here kind of got left out, which was fucked up because the Bay Area fans are so loyal. Whether the team is good, bad, in between, they going to ride for you regardless to the end. And, and the fact that we were able to bring playoff basketball back um, to, to, to y'all fan base was just crazy. Just, you know, to this day, we have so – I mean, I just got rid of my house up there in March, but – I would be in the grocery store, and that's all. They wouldn't talk about the, the, the current team. It was, we just loved your team and this, this, and that. And it was, it's really crazy to see what kind of imprint we made on the, on the town. Yeah, man. Legendary. So, Y'all made so, your presence felt for show, for show. Yeah. So for the people Legendary. outside of the Bay, they kind of feel like, or, I mean, they're right, but music, the Bay got put on the map when y'all really hit. 
Were there anyone that you guys that, that you guys looked up to growing up in the game, or was it just the hustle and, and rapping just came? Oh no, there was plenty of people we looked up to. I know, you know, me growing up, I I looked up to Russell Simmons. I looked up to, um, you understand me, Rick Rubin. Um, you know, Jay Prince. You understand what I'm saying, Luke Skywalker. You know, these were, these were these were CEOs way before before me. You know what I'm saying? Um, but mine was like really really homegrown. What I mean by that is like I didn't have distribution like like that. I had a small one stop. You understand what I'm saying? But anyway, to make a long story short, what I'm saying is these dudes really planted their feet in hip hop, man, and showed up and showed out and was big. And I like I I'm really influenced by them. You know what I'm saying? There's others too, such as you know we got to first of all we got to give it up to Cool Hurt because you know he's credited for being the one to create rap. You know what I'm saying? We gotta we gotta love people like Cool Hurt. We gotta we gotta love people like you understand me. Grandmaster Flash and the Furious Five, Melly Mel. Now, Melly Mel was spitting that game, man. I love the way he spit that game. You know, he's speaking real life way back then. And when you can relate to it, you know what I'm saying? Ain't no need to hate to it. A lot of people, when they can't relate to something, they just hate actually it. just hate it. Like, it, it, right. just because you can't relate, man, that don't mean it's fake. You know what I'm saying? That's you. You you in a way of yourself. You ain't gamed up. You game goofy. Hello. <laughs> Yeah, you know, we got we got that um, <laughs> game goofy. We got that high school marching band background. Game goofy. Game goofy. What you say Todd. I said we got that high school marching band background, man. That 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 rhythm that you know, at a at an age when um hip hop first came into to our lives, that that love for the music and being in band class kind of transcended over to hip hop and just those rhythms and the beats and it and it kind of like you know 40 say he was a drummer in the marching band but if you listen to 40 rap the nigga kind of rap like a snare drum you know like Cadence. he really be like 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 spitting fire so it's it's all related and I think um I think um the early days of hip hop like was just funny shit but then when Russell Simmons uh Start pushing, cause you know Russell was there. He was out there for all that young shit, man. With Curtis Blow and all that shit, he was around. But when he really started pushing that Run DMC agenda, and then his public enemy is Eric B and Rakim. You know the the Def Jam shit started creating superstar, the LL Cool J, and you know a nigga on the West Coast is looking like nigga. We we want to do this shit too. You know what I mean? Right. So we don't got nobody in hip hop that's in the Bay or on the West Coast. You know, Dr. Dre and them was down there doing world class wrecking crew. Ice T popped up on the scene early. It was um, you know, the um LA Dream Team. It was motherfuckers doing the shit, but to see that to see it all turn into big business. The business was side. What, it motivated us because we sitting here rubbing shoulders with rich ass drug dealers and niggas riding around in Benzes and all kind of fucking shit. We like, man, I want to have, I'm trying to get in the fucking game. So we we literally, I, I, I tell you on my end, man, I, I literally was looking at the music like, nigga, these tapes and these boxes is like kilos, nigga. I'm flipping this shit. Mm -hmm. I'm finna stack this shit, stack the profit, re-up. You know what I'm saying? That's how I was, that's, that's what I was on. This is the thing, what I, what I know. This is what I know. You know, I try to tell... I figured Le I'm out. saying get that legal money, that legal money, not the That's illegal, right. the legal money. That's right, that, that legal money, because I tell them, you know, um, even even in the streets, if, you, if you're getting that illegal money, don't try to turn that shit into a permanent occupation. That's stupid. Like, you know what I'm saying? Their shit really is designed because, you know what I'm saying? Like, you know, even your corporate world, you don't know what the fuck they did to get where they at. You feel what I'm saying? But they was in and out like the burger. You feel me? <laughs> <laughs> you know they got, they they used whatever they was doing, and, and whether it was hard, whether it was e illegal or or legal, that whatever they was doing, they used that as a stepping stone to be one hundred percent legal. You know what I'm saying? And you can't make that shit a permanent occupation. Like motherfuckers want to make that shit a permanent occupation. And you know that three years of grinding, of getting them, getting your money on, or that five years of grinding ain't worth thirty years in the pen. It just don't add up. You know what I'm saying? Nah, don't so, add up. It's so a we setup. Always taught to, yeah, it's a setup. So we was always taught to, you understand me? You know what I'm saying? You you get, had a frame of mind. Be a businessman, bro. Be a businessman. Because let me tell you something. First of all, this rap game. You first of all, you get it's way more money in it 
You understand me? It's more rap. It's more. It's way more money in the rap game than it is in the dope game. Okay. Yeah. By no far. Question. By far. And it's way more. And and it's way more fame than it is in the dope game. Right. That's if you're seeking for fame. It's nice to have a little bit, but that ain't my 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 goal was the money. I want the bread. You feel me? So you know what I'm saying. And it's way more, and and. You live in a you live in a, a legal you live in a legal not illegal a legal life, you understand what I'm saying? You know you ain't gotta you know you ain't gotta you know have you know look around like you know what I'm saying watch you do but you but you gotta be careful with it because rappers some of these rappers they they talk themselves into all kind of beef and shit like hey that's unnecessary man get your money you feel what I'm saying get your money man. These motherfucking headphones tripping. But anyway, get your Gouda. That's where it's at. You know, turn, turn, t take that little Gouda you having, whatever Gouda you having. First of all, the main thing is get you a, a piece of the earth. Get you a, get you some property. You know what I'm saying? I don't give a fuck if it's just a piece of land, a small piece of land somewhere in the Midwest, the South. You know what I'm saying? It could be a little lot, anything. Just get, just start off with that first. You know what I'm what I'm saying? And you know, take it from there, man. There's so much, so much, so many things. You know, it's always great to make money doing something that you love. You know, when you when you making money doing something that you love, and you can't be lazy. You can't be a couch potato hustler, man. You know what I'm saying? You gotta you gotta go to bed late and wake up early. You know what I'm saying? That's me. I wake I go to bed late and wake up early. Sometimes I sleep with both eyes open. <laughs> you get in what you, you know. I mean, you get out what you put. You uh, you get out what you put into it. So it, it's a it's a never ending. Both eyes when did open. It, <laughs> when did it go from, or did it was it was it always? When did it go from just I'm a rapper to really understanding that you're an actual business? Was it from the jump, or did it take a few years? I tell you, I got. I'm, I'm gonna let you talk. I just feel like really just it a head packing it, right it now. Is, it's a forced play, man. It's it's a forced play. You a youngster, and. You're doing something you love, hip hop. You're making money, and then all of a sudden, things really happen. And you look, you looking at the bank account, you looking at the pockets, and you got a lot of money, and you got a lot of people depending on you, and you got folks working for you. You sitting signing contracts. It shit gets serious, and you know what I mean. Like you, you, you either step up to the plate or you don't. And it's like I, I really, I really feel like um, people who succeed. You're not necessarily succeeding because of just you're talented or just because you have the opportunity. You got to, it's so many elements to being the one that gets through. You know what I mean? It's, 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 um, it's just something you, you know, you, you look back at, uh, a lot of it, a lot of it is luck to be honest. I mean, obviously you put that hard work in, but it's luck to be able to maneuver through it because most motherfuckers can't. But what I do, man, you, you, you just got to keep going for it, bro. You got to have luck. And, 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 you gotta have luck and you gotta have longevity. You gotta, Too Short always say, he always said this, man, don't stop rapping. Like, and I always say, if you keep throwing shit at the wall, eventually it's gonna stick. You know what I'm saying? So to take for instance this, you know, during the time when Pop passed away, 96, RIP2 Pop, he passed away. It seemed like the carpet was taken under the West Coast leg, just like taken it from under our feet and everything shifted to the South, even though, We've been rocking with the South and the South, been doing their thing, but I'm talking about they totally did their thing, you know? So we had to hold on like a hubcap in the fast lane to us back our turn. And that's what we did. You know, you pay attention to the ball. You got to watch the ball. You don't know if the game going to throw you a curve, a knuckleball, a fast ball, whatever the case they're going to throw you, you just got to be ready to hit that thing. And when you swing, swing for the fence. Base hits is cool, but you want to hit that home run, man. You want that platinum. You want that platinum, that platinum like getting the motherfucking championship, you know, ring or whatever. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, like I say, man, I'm I'm telling you right now, coming from the shoe coming from the shoe box to 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 uh a safe deposit box is a really interesting situation. You know, my uncle St. Charles taught me how to actually go get a bank account. St. Charles is credited credited for being, you may have heard Master P and many others. Talk highly about him because that's my uncle. That's my mama's brother. You know what I'm saying? He's legendary. I mean, it wouldn't be a lot of people, a lot of your favorite rappers, if it wasn't for him. Because you know, he he is he 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 laced me. He laced me in the click. E40, V Legit, D Shot, Sugar T, Sick with the Records. You understand me? And A Wall Records. Shout and out so to the click. So and, mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Shout out to the click. You know what I'm saying? He laced us. Then Master P came along. He laced Master P. You understand me? So just imagine all so many people that JT the bigger figure and so many others that came through because Gillo Records was doing their thing no matter what. Everybody was doing their thing, bro, out here in the Bay. And my uncle had a lot to do with it along with us because we all learned together. <laughs> but I'm just saying, you know, he taught me how to be a man as well, not just like I say, he taught me how to go get a bank account, boy. When I was, you know, when I was a youngster, I always looked up to him. We single handedly invented the, uh, the independent music, hip, the independent hip hop scene in the Bay. It either comes from E Forty and his his chain of, you know, the you know the trickle down, or it comes from Too Short and would trickle down for me. Like we gave everybody the game. You cannot trace it back. It's impossible to trace it back any further than us. Because he just told you where he got it from. I'll tell you who I got it from. It didn't come from anywhere else in hip-hop. We invented this shit. When they talk about, oh, the Bay Independent, the Bay, you know, everybody, they do their own. That shit come from us. There ain't no... And the, the, the best part about I, what I like bragging about, me and 40, is that we ain't just some old-ass niggas that did this shit. And we on the sidelines oh, telling a story, was, sitting on like, the porch, yeah. nigga. We in the game talking Still. about, nigga, young, stop being in this motherfucking game, nigga. That's how we That's how we doing it. All right, let, let, let me ask you. Let, let me ask you a question. Who? Uh, then this is one of my favorite rappers from the Bay. Who umbrella Mac Mall fall under? He fall under um, Young Black Brother Records, Kyrie. Uh, you know the, them boys right there, and um, and uh, you know one of the people he really look up to is Mac Dre, and a lot of people do too as well. Mac Dre did his thing. R.I.P. Yeah. Mac well, Dre. That's, 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 that's Vallejo. It, 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 that's Vallejo. He's definitely legendary. Is Ma you know, one of your cousins? Gone, gone too soon. Mac Ma is my cousin. Yeah, Mac Ma, Mac Ma is my cousin. He's from the crest side. I'm from the hill side. You know, but we work that's, together yeah, and we still we one respect of my favorite, each other. Man. Yeah, we like yeah. You know, Mac Ma really put it down. People don't know how really how big Mac Ma really. You understand me? Put it, he he did his thing in hip hop like way beyond the Bay Area. Maybe further. To be honest with you, people don't want to hear this, and I always tell him he could he. He'd be like, nah, cuz, oh, nah. I'm like, man, dude, you was you was well known way further than what people think, bro. Like across the, across the, you, you know, like y'all know about him. You know what I'm saying? They know about Mac Ma in the Midwest, the South, all that for many moons, you know? Yeah, yeah. So, shout out to Mac Ma, man. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, Young brothers got to get it together. Home. Young brothers got to get it together. And the, you, the Get Right song. and The Get Right, I mean, you, come on. you need to get some get some right. Get right. Come on, man. It's, it's it's real. It's just it's just being honest. It's real talk. You know what I'm saying? What it was uh, you got me wide open. You know, man. He the man went crazy. Like he did his yeah, thing. Yeah, he did. He did his thing. You know? What's what's been the secret to the longevity? You know, we asked we we, we had an opportunity to interview Snoop last season. Y'all two. Y'all been in the game for over 35 years. And, and like you said, just you just said you're not on the sidelines right now. You're still in it. How what? How the fuck y'all been doing that? Man, you got to be a, a, a politician. You got to be a CEO. You got to be a, 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 a therapist. You got to know how to like, like really like... <laughs> You know, you take do. take the pictures, kiss the babies, uh, handle the dispute, handle the disputes. You got to make sure different people eat that need to be eaten at times. You got to like, it's a lot of stuff. You got to keep the family together. You got to do a lot of things. You got to know how to get this producer with that person that do hooks with that dude that got a verse. You got to, I mean, you got to all the time just be running. The, the, you know, the coach, the quarterback plays. You call him plays, and basically. <clears throat> It's just a constant, constant, constant machine of grinding, 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 and staying relevant with who's hot. And we like really like never tap out of our area. I done moved all over the country, but I ain't never left that that Oakland, that Bay Area. I ain't never letting that go on the just the foundation of my music. So we keep it real Bay. We keep it Bay, and, it, and I think just that longevity is just having a good ear to music and then being able to. Do all those things that other people can't do, man. Other people can't get on the phone and squash some shit. Niggas can't get on the phone and make two phone calls and make you two niggas some money. I don't even get none of the money. I just make a phone call so y'all can just get some money real quick. That's the kind of shit we do. And that's the kind of shit when you put it out there, bro, that shit come back. 
And we, I know 40 like that. I'm like that. Fab is like that. A lot of niggas is like that. You put it out there and you just don't understand that giving, giving, giving is really receiving. My, I, I, really I, got receiving. A line, I got a line I always say short. The benefits of being real is so beneficial. <laughs> I like Straight that. up. Thanks. Straight up. The only, reason, the only reason like I'm that. on this show and the only reason I've been blessed to have is because I got a, a solid brother that I always stayed down with, Matt. And Matt, <laughs> Matt had the connection and made it happen, man. So the benefits have been real. I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a testament mm -hmm. of that, man. It's, it's beneficial, bro. I want to, uh, 40, I know you had a really good relationship with him. He's one of my favorite people of all time. Uh, talk to us about your time with Pac and, and what he meant to you. Man, Pac, man, good times. You know, every time we hook up, it's like, like little kids. Like you know, how you grew up. You know how you 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 see a friend, you, uh, one of your best friends you ain't seen in hella years. It's just like that, and we can see each other a week later. We just like, you know, big hugs, big. You know what I'm saying? Just like this, is my guy. Like we always gonna have a great time together. Like that's just how we just that it. The game designed us. Like God put good people together. You know what I'm saying? And so that's how that's how it was with Pac. We would always you could you we we uphold our baitness. You like two bait niggas get together. You know we you know you could always tell the bait movements like yeah man you know the way we talk and the whole woo wop like it's different. We different. I promise you. You know what I'm saying. And so that's how Pac was. You know Pac was definitely you know they could say oh well Pac is from the East Coast. This man that man. His heart was Bay Area. I don't give a fuck what nobody said. Richmond? Bay was it Richmond? Was, was a, Mar uh, Moran, right? They say it was hey, Moran. It was Moran. It was Moran, but his all his homies was rich. A lot of his homies was Richmond, the rowdy R. Yeah. You yeah. Know what yeah. They, they, yeah. Where they don't play at. They don't play in, yeah. they don't play in Richmond. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. And all his homies was from there. You know, a lot of them. You know, so it's like, you know, basically, man, Pac. You know, it was always good energy, um, a lot of work ethic. He would always go in there, he'd knock out hella songs. That's why I love to just, just go in there and knock out hella verses. But Pac was a whole nother animal, boy. When he go into the studio, he finishing the song, he doing three verses, and it's going to all make sense. It's going to all be great content. It's going to be great subject matters, and the spit going to be ganged up. You know what I'm saying? It's going to be real, and it's going to touch your heart. He going to go in there and make three songs, you know, within, within an hour. He he, dang near leave out of there making nine songs a day and for and fully complete, like no going back to touch nothing up or nothing. You know what I'm saying? But you gotta remember, it wasn't Pro Tools like that back then. It had just right. begin right, right after you know what I'm saying. Right after we made Dustin and the hey man, we the made dude Dustin was writing raps. Shit. Go ahead. Pac was writing raps, a pen and paper, and as fast as you could write, it's done. just write, just fast as you could write. He's just doing that. And he's writing, and you like. Then when he goes in there and rap, you like. You didn't just write that shit that fast, and that. I don't. I don't know how he was doing it. Like fast. He did it right thinking. in front of my face several times, and I, 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 I was amazed. And I'm like, he, like when we did, when we did, um, we ain't hard to find. That's on, um, all eyes on me. Double yeah, album, we ain't hard to find. Like diamond. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a diamond album. You so know what I'm saying? Diamond. Hell it yeah. It was diamond. You know. And when we did that, we was at Can Am Studio, so he had Rick Rock. In there with Sebo, um, doing uh, trading war stories. Mm. Oh, he had nut. me. Oh, yeah, he had me, right. Mike Mosley. Yeah. He had me, Mike Mosley, D Shot, Be Legit, and Richie Rich. In there knocking out. We ain't hard to find. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, that was that's a classic. Ooh, that's mm. a classic. Yeah. Mm. So he coming. He coming. He coming in there checking on everybody. He going. It's like you know, Can Am had. Three or four studios up in that hole. You know what I'm saying? It was nothing but studios in there. And that's what most of them all pro utilizing every inch of it. Proper coming there, he go to one studio to another one. I'm like, what y'all looking like? What y'all looking like, man? What y'all looking like? He already laid. Let me not, not, hey, not to mention how wild before. that in environment was in the studio, boy. That, that was that was Oh yeah. If you go in that building, once you walk past the reception area, you you like nigga, where am I? He had all his bay <laughs> niggas with him. Oh man, he was in heaven. He no. had all his bay niggas with him. He had all his. Nigga, it might be. It might heaven. be thirty bloods over there, then a whole Snoop Dogg and about fifty Crips go that way, and then they got this big ass niggas walk around looking like they just got out the pen yesterday. <laughs> yeah, that's real. But this, but this day, though, short. This day right here, it was all Bay Area. You understand me? It was all Bay Area. We was up in that motherfucker like really, really 
family reunion shit, like putting together something that we never knew would be so monumental. A double album, All Lies On Me. We was on there. You know, you had Forte on the album. Like you had, I think Drew Down was on that thing. Like a whole, but he put the whole bay on, man. That man put, literally put on for his city, but he put on for the soil. You feel what I'm saying? And that was, it was amazing, man. And, um, you know, I was just glad to be part of that, you know, and in the meantime and in between time, you know, he he was on my record, you know, he, shit, we had just did a million dollar spot, Dustin and Disgusted, like, you understand me? These songs, these songs are legendary songs. And I just wish, if he was with here, like he had, I was telling, I was telling Mount Westmore the other day, I said, man, did y'all know Pac had hit me one day and he was like, yo, 40. He say, he say, I say, what's up, folks? He say, now I meant to tell you, man, so look, I'm doing this thing. We're going to call, like, I'm doing, you know how they got Planet Hollywood? I say, I say, yeah. He say, well, I'm trying to put together this shit. You might want to invest in this. I want to call it uh, Gangster Cafe. Gangster Cafe, where we have all the gangster niggas on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, on the, uh, on the walls and whatnot. Like, and what he meant by that was like old school mob, like, you know, like Al Capone and Lucky Luciano and, you know what I'm saying? The big tuna and all them. You feel what I'm saying? So I was like, hey, well, let me know what's happening. Cause you know, I was playing with a few dollars, you know what I'm saying? I was a youngster, you know what I'm saying? This the, this the nineties, you know what I'm saying? This the, you know, I'm in my twenties. I'm, 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 I'm with it. You feel me? So, but it didn't unfold. He also told me he was putting together an album um, with a whole bunch of old schoolers. You know what I'm saying? I was part of, well, I was one of them. You know what I'm saying? He had nice and smooth. You, both of them boys uh, rap their voices. Some of the most unique voices of all time. You know what I'm saying? Sup, if you say. listen to, yeah, yeah, you feel what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah, you know I know that, man. You know I know that, man. Yeah. Come on, man. You know, he had a whole bunch of OGs that he wanted on the album. And um, and then, uh, you know, you know, later on, dude, my folks was gone, man. I had seen him at the Rapper's Ball video, me and Short. He was there kicking it with us and shit like that. And, you know, a few months, a couple months later, he was gone. He was gone, man. And uh, they had to say, man, Pac got, got shot in, in uh, Las Vegas. And, you know, mind you, when we, I'm normally, I'm not really, like, you know, on like walking into the ring like him and Suge and them was doing, but I'll be out there. I'll be out there in Vegas, and when we connect, we connect. Like, I'm always in, I was always in Vegas. I went to all the fights, you know what I'm saying? I was, you know what I'm saying? I was, I was fucking with it, you know what I'm saying? I'm just a, a young tycoon, you know what I'm saying? So I was fucking with all the fights, the whole woo -wops. And um, I just didn't, I, I was at home on this day, and um, they had told me he had, uh, he had got shot, so I was like, you know, he probably gonna live, he, he a tough dude, man, because that's how he nigga, was real I, tough. I like was that. there, nigga. I went to the motherfucking fight. I went to that fight. That was with the, the people from fucking London, I think. That was uh, Sheldon, whoever Tyson fought. Knocked the nigga out in like not a minute or some shit. He did that I to everybody. I, I, seen, I seen fucking Pac mm -hmm. that night. I seen him after the fucking fight, after all this shit happened. I seen him. He was supposed to go to 662 and just turn up and shit. You know, that was Shug's club. Mm -hmm. Niggas never made it to the club. I heard that bullshit happen, man. Mm, mm, mm. Rest man. in peace, yeah. Pac, man. Man. Short, you're one of the very few who got the opportunity to do a song with Pac, Big, and Jay. What do you attribute your versatility to, and what were those experiences like? Well, you know, man, I, I mean, I, I'm, I'm the big homie in a lot of scenarios in, in, in these, when you think, uh, oh, that's so-and-so, and that's so-and-so, but I'm the big homie, and the shit kind of means something when... Uh, motherfuckers is looking at the track record and they going, damn, this nigga short got like so many motherfucking platinum and gold albums. And I did it like before that they came along. So Big getting in the game, Jay getting in the game. I'm, I'm platinum, 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 platinum. They like looking like, you know, niggas is coming up, but they like, man, I want to get this too short nigga on some shit. Nice. And it's, you know, <laughs> hell yeah. Hell you know, yeah. them niggas was getting at me like they're like, bro, you spitting that game, we fuck with you. And it was it was really on that vibe that I had uh, moved to Atlanta and I was going to New York a lot. And then a the nigga like like tied in and like Puff and Big and, and Jay and, and Dame and just you know, just nigga was just tied into a bunch of motherfuckers that was, you know, hot on the East Coast. Fat Joe's fucking with a lot of niggas out there. So Eric Sermon and Red Man and Keith Murray, I was I was literally tretch out there running with them niggas and making songs and shit. So it just, 
it just was, you know, living life the way you want to live it, man. If you get, you play for a certain city, man, you might, you might not vibe out in that town, but then another city, you might be, become family, like in the Bay, you know. So, I, 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 I went to Atlanta and had a whole world out there. I got a whole thing going on in New Orleans from from the time I was a little boy, and my family and stuff, and you know, got a Vegas lifestyle. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So, I'm, I'm the guy who took who took that that town shit. And, and took it to the world, you know. Both that of your both of your songs, the song you got with uh, Big and the song you got with Hove, man, that's classics. I'm talking about some it's of the biggest songs, some set. of the biggest songs that come out come come from both of them, man. You on both of them? Hey, you know, it was a, uh, it was in the moment. You don't really think about timeless. You don't really think about the magnitude of it. You just, I mean, literally, man, you in there when you're doing collabs, even with a nigga like Fody, Scarface. Uh, I mean, it's a lot of niggas I got down with. Like, you in there, you in the studio, and these niggas, uh, you know, nigga might, nigga might lay his verse first, and then you stuck in the studio. Like, Big did that to me, man. He laid his verse first. And now you sitting in the room, and it's a room full of people. They drinking and laughing, smoking <laughs> the air, and they looking like, what you about to do? You got to it's come just, with that shit. <laughs> Yeah. Them the moments though. I had a whole that's, bunch of bitches in my lifetime. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> that's the moments though, man. Like, like 40, 40 put pressure on you in the studio. They do them guys like that. They do that to you, man. What's it like now? Because it used to be y'all would all be in one area, like you said, kick it, enjoy it, and make great music. Now people are just sitting, I mean, outside the pandemic, but it kind of seems like that's less and less. It still happens, but not as much. Now they just send music and you hop on each other. I, I, explain that energy because we kind of feel the same way with our show. Although we love having y'all here before the show started, we already said this shit would be a whole nother level if we was in person because you get that energy. What's that studio energy like compared to just having to, hey, jump on this? They sent it. It's much, much better when you're together, you know, of course, you know that. And um, But nowadays with the technology, like we are doing Zoom and all this stuff like that right now, that, I mean, it was, a, it was a time when it wasn't none of that. It was a time we wasn't able to look at each other, you know, like, you know, we never thought, what was that, the Jetsons? We never thought that we'd really be looking, just, you know, hit a button and we really, you know, one person could be in, uh, you know, Europe and another person could be in, in the Bay Area and, and FaceTime with quality and talking to each other. Like, like Star really Trek, happened. man. <laughs> yeah, Star Trek. It really happened. So <laughs> this makes it easier for us, you know, with Zoom and, and many other... Um, you know, apps and whatever you you want to call it. Um, you know, because we can get in the studio right now and we can just all put it on FaceTime or you know what I'm saying, me uh, Skype or whatever you want to call it. Because Skype's still around. I, I hate to say it, because I did it on <laughs> Skype the other day and that shit worked. Let's just they, they, they it was a, it was a company that wanted me because you know I'm in I'm in the tech world and shit too. So they was like, now nah, we're gonna do Skype on this one and that's they they didn't step they shit up too. You feel me? So <laughs> they they ain't gonna miss out on no, no money, you know. <laughs> but um, they <laughs> yeah. So now nah, this is it's just great because we could be like you know the producer would be right there. Okay, man, add, add, just go in and add add some symbols to that right there. Just add a little some symbols and put more sinister sounds in there. Put some some like hey man with sounds te technology, man. Yeah. It's technology, so you're gonna do everything. If I can't get in the studio with Fody, we still making the song, man. You know what I'm saying? We still gonna make the song. So it's like. When everything go back to the way it was, even before it was like this, we was doing this stuff. We wasn't doing yeah. all these Zooms. But if I had known the Zoom game, I would have been telling so many niggas I had meetings with, niggas, it's Zoom me, nigga. Like, I would have been, been on that. But... <laughs> Zoom me. <laughs> Shit. That's real spirit. So, so I'm saying, when we go back to the way it was, we're going to utilize all this like to the fullest. Like, bro, if I can't pull up, I'm going to pull up like this, man. And we're going to meet on the screen and we're going to... S uh, send a song email. We're gonna do this. We're gonna keep grinding. So I like oh. this shit, man. I was I thought we was fly back in the day when we had little studios on the tour bus and shit. I thought that was yeah, super that was technology. Fly. That Nigga, was this, fly. Get this shit, shit done, man. It's a new level now. Early or mid two thousands, obviously rest in peace, Mac Dre, the hyphy movement comes in. And y'all step to the forefront of that, you know, with two anthems, blow the whistle, and uh tell me when to go. What was that movement like? Because that really, again, kind of stamped the Bay again. Like, they got this, they, they on their own shit. They got this whole little movement going on again that, that not only stayed there, but swept the world. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, short beats are always telling me, man, man, they out there doing that dance. So, really, a lot of the shit come from the town. 
but don't get it fucked up. Mac Dre had his own thing too. You understand me? So I, we we would I would always say that Mac Dre was like the in the forefront of all that. You know what I'm saying? All we did, all I did was joined in like everybody else from Northern California. You know what I'm saying? Like why not? I ain't never moved from out of this motherfucker. And even if I did, so what? I'm Bay Area to the heart. You know what I'm saying? So I had to participate. You know what I'm saying? I wasn't finna play a hate. So you know, basically, I was already doing songs while he was alive. We had the song with the with the Federation called, you understand me, um, Hyphy. Mac Dre was well alive, you know what I'm saying? Um, you know, I went out there with Lil John M um, in 2004, and I stayed out there for like three weeks and did my Get a Report Card album. When I was out there, I my, my work ethic was incredible. <laughs> um, I had I had best of both worlds. I had Incredible. the snap music, cause I was on like this two step remix and stuff like that. I was on the, I was on you know I was on snap your fingers and and many other songs out there. You know what I'm saying? Me uh, and then I'm working with I'm in I'm in the bay as well. You know we had um you know this is a slumper. You know what I'm saying with with uh with the boy um with the boy uh uh, uh turf, turf talk. Top. Turf you know talk? what I'm saying? My cousin Turf Talk went crazy. Rick Rock produced that. This is a slumper. This is a slumper. This is a slumper. You know what I'm saying? We had um oh what's the one? Oh, I had one, I had one. Oh, what the hell was it called? Uh we had some dumbass. Oh, then we had the one with we had the one with uh with um we had Hyphy. We had the one with Fab. We had my, my son Droopy produced with um me, Turf Talk, and, and Fab. It was Fab Record. Um, and that was called Super Sick with it. Like, we was gradually making a whole new sound. You understand me? And so, with that being said, you know, John, I, we one day was a magical day, right? And, and Short was there, too. Short came in when I think... Short, you came in when I was doing muscle cars, right? Was it muscle cars you came into the studio that day? Yeah, I tipped in on a few of them sessions, man. That line of sessions. Yeah. I was, I was yeah, around. Yeah, so Short... Because, you know, Lil John, we, we had stank on the studio... And so, um, Lil John was just fucking around on the on the um, on the drums, and he came with that motherfucking boom, 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 boom. That's what that was the song. That song right there. When he did that, we was like, "Ooh, that's a this is a whole nother sound. This ain't this ain't no this ain't this ain't hyphy. This is I mean this ain't this ain't." This ain't, ain't no name for this butt hype because it's energy. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, you know, who I call, I call, you know, the, the you know, I call Keek the Sneak. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's his thing. You know what I'm saying? Energy. You know, hyphy. You know what I'm saying? So, Keek, 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 Keek was like, You I got the nigga on the plane. And you, got, you got him down in Atlanta, right? Nah, it's a trick. I was fit. I was to. I was, just, I was actually finna send him the track. And I and, and Dame Fame was like, Dame Fame was like, hey, we in Atlanta. I say, nigga, you not in Atlanta, bro. Cause they ain't never in Atlanta like that. You know, because I'm all I was, you know, I was I was hanging out in Atlanta. So I'm like, what the fuck? I say, man, bro, nigga, look here, man. We got big liquor, we got big smoke, we got everything you need, big food. Slide through this motherfucker right now. Come to stanky old stank on your studio with the hurry up, miss my nigga. Them niggas came through. <laughs> <laughs> Them niggas came through. I, I, they came I knew he through. was out there, man. I, I knew he was there. I, I thought you flew him out. Nah, nah, he was there. And so we, when we, so he came. So he heard muscle cars and just you know for us all school muscle cars. You know, you know, Keith got that unique voice. You know what I'm saying? He killed that man, shit, right? Let me, let, me, let me tell so, the hyphy story, man. Can I tell the hyphy story? Yeah, go ahead, go ahead. Tell, I got a story. That, I got to finish up though, cause they want to know. They want to know, short. <laughs> go ahead. Let me tell you. I'm gonna tell you the history of the hyphy. What this is. Go, go on and finish up, man. Okay, let me finish up. And I'm let me finish up. I'm gonna make a long story short and a short story long. Too short. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, <laughs> that's crazy. Hey, so um, what I'm saying is, what what I did was this. It came with muscle cars. Okay, I sent it to Turf Talk. We we emailed it to Turf Talk. So Turf Talk, get to the studio. I need you to write this, whatever. So he wrote the shit, killed it, sent it back, killed that shit. That same day. The same motherfucking day. A few minutes after he made Lil John made muscle cars, he was fucking around with the little drum thing. Do do cat do 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 cat do do cat do 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 cat do 
came with that drum pattern. I'm like, man, ain't nothing. This is tribal. This ain't ain't no shit like this out there ever. This ain't never been. No, this is something that's so unique and no one. I like unique shit. So I go on that motherfucker. I spit my shit. No, before I even spit my shit, Keek, Keek and um, Dane go to the. They huddled up. They went around the corner. They was they was vibing. They was drinking and everything. And they just and they went around the corner, like around the corner. When I say literally around the corner, like in a hallway, and huddled up and was like, "Tell me when they got. Tell me when they got. Tell me when they got." You feel what I'm talking about? And so they came in there, did the hook. I'm like, I added my little crazy ass boy. Tell me when they go. And then Lil John's just uh, Lil John looked at me and I looked at him. And he just he went and found dumb girl by Run DMC and just dumb dumb dumb. You know, <laughs> dumb girl. I say this nigga Lil John throw right. That's when he came with that dumb 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 dumb. You feel me? And it was just magic in that bitch. So then, so we had we had two verses on there, right? I had a verse. I had the first verse. Jesus Christ had dress to shake him. I ain't got nothing about playing on growing son. Keek had his shit. Then. We sent the same shit to Turf Talk. Turf Talk killed it. Turf Talk, cousin Turf Talk gassed that thing. So Lil John stepped in, he just, Turf Talk killed that shit, but nigga, you gotta, we gotta take him off of that one because we already got him on muscle cars, right? We gotta take him, we gotta take him off of that. You, neither one of y'all need to rap on the third verse. Nobody, you need to do a chant. He said, you need to do a chant. I need you to talk about everything that goes on in y'all region in the Bay Area with that movement y'all got going on. And that's when I did it. And it became a classic ass record. I just want to let y'all know that. Hello. Classic record, classic verse, classic. <laughs> now let me tell you what the hyphy is, man. This 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 is what this is what happened. So what what somebody that's not from the Bay would think as the hyphy, you would think it was um a movement from 2002 or something to like five, six, seven years later, and it was this, this movement that happened. It really was, it was not already around. That. So Hyphy never had a name. It's just the way Bay niggas acted. That's what we did. We had side shows. They burned rubber. They had you know show off your car, and it was the whole. We was same Hyphy thing. at Dan Foley short. We was Hyphy at Dan Foley with yeah, the tail everything niggas. like you know every, every, the whole. I'm saying the whole, the whole Bay. That's what I'm saying. It was, you, you you get together, you burn rubber, you, you do your shit, y'all hang out wherever it be, the intersection wherever that shit been going down, the mall parking lot, whatever. The way they was dancing was. You know, it was the the bay, the bay shit was like real mobby, and I think what what Keek the Sneak and Mac Dre did was they made it they you know ecstasy started getting popular and they made it a little more fun and it was partying and shit. They still spitting the same game that everybody been getting from E Forty and Two Short, but then they turned it into you know out in the streets the little the little hyphy dance and all that shit. They was doing that shit before they called it hyphy. Somebody just gave it a name one day. And then Little John is Little John is my homie from Atlanta who I was working with Little John even when he worked for uh Jermaine Dupree at So So Death. I've been working with Little John since like since he wasn't even famous. And Little John has always been my guy. So we did a lot of songs together, a lot, a lot, a lot of music together, a lot. And at one point Little John was getting really hot in the game and he went to do a show in the bay. And he hit me up and he said, man, it's some shit going on in the Bay. That's, he like, I want to fuck with that shit. He's like, he said, I want to make you and E-40 records like that. So Lil John went and got a taste of whatever was going on. He got some, some, some Mac Dre-ism, some Kick the Sneak-ism. He got some something isms. he called Win Up. And, because he's a DJ. And he DJ parties and he know what make parties go. So he had a mission to give E-40 and Two Story hit records that went with this movement that was happening in the Bay. and it, But, but, but it listen, so listen, sure. That's true, right? But the, the sound that he came with was like... I mean, no he's an overachiever. No other, no other ever on this earth. Like, the shit that was going on that was hyphy in the Bay didn't sound nothing like Tell Me When To Go and motherfucking um, and, and Blow The Whistle. Like, he, nothing. What did he do? What did, Nowhere what near was Keith, it. What was Keith the Stink song he did? He did one for Keith too, right? Nah, he didn't do one for Keith. Nah, oh, Track Million he did, did um, that. He did. That's my word. Track Million did that. Oh, it's that's, that's just sound like a little Rick Rock. Rick, Rick, okay. did, Rick my Rock nigga did tracks, that's my blue nigga. jeans. Rick, Rick Rock did blue jeans. Little John Nikes. was giving hyphy beats to niggas. Uh, Petey Pablo. Uh, he was yeah, giving hyphy beats to Yin Yang Twins. That nigga was. Yeah. 
you know that fucking uh. Yeah, niggas used to go Usher, dumb to the yin yang. yang. Usher and um uh, and Lil John that yeah, that's kind of hypey. That yeah. was he was on that vibe. Come on, that, you know what I'm saying? So. And we got and Rick Rock. Rick Rock had a lot to do with the hyphy movement too, man. The Federation with they sound. That's, well, I, that, I you think know, the you sound heard that, that shit. You, you the signature that shit. sound that I call hyphy. If I, you want to put a name hyphy on it, is Rick Rock sound. That's me. That, that's my In personal real opinion. Life, Rick Rock you know what used to go crazy with them hyphy. Tracks a million was enhancing the sound. Lil John did a version of it, but that the heart of the bay, that fucking what everybody was trying to be like and sound like was Rick Rock. Rick Rock. No doubt about it. Rick Rock. It's the truth. So, you know, that shit, that shit happened, man. And then the last thing I want to say is, just like I said, you think hyphy is a fucking time frame? That shit's still going on right now, man. It's the same. You, it's the same exact shit. It ain't changed. Niggas is still What's hyphy. If, if the right song come on, new or old, it's still they hyphy. They're going to go just, crazy. Yeah. yeah. Just a newer type dance Memories. to it. Memories. A little flavor That's to it. it. That's they it. They still doing them dances because the, the, the dancers never dances really more super now. surfaced. They never really surfaced, surfaced, surfaced to the globe. Like you the music make you was, do it. The, the music make you do it. The whole Bay had dreads. Don't get fucked up. We didn't create dreads. You know, like I say, dreads been around, you know, way before we was even thought of. You know what I'm saying? I'm saying, but at the end of the day, the, the whole Bay realized this, had no shirts on. With dreadlocks, <laughs> everybody in the Bay had dreads. Everybody. With no shirts on, hella niggas in the video with dreadlocks. Next thing you know, the whole world start growing up. I know we had a big influence on hip hop with that shit. I can Even sit though, you down right, right now. New nigga. York had dreads in like a more of a different type of way. It was like different though. When this shit, when the shit hit the Bay, when the Bay started were, having dreads, y'all was shaking. It was different. They we were shaking, shaking them. them. Y'all was shaking. They wasn't shaking them. Thank you for putting that in perspective, because they That's I don't want nobody thinking I'm hating on them or nothing. That's all. Right. My, yeah, my, Miami niggas had braids early, 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 but early. But they wasn't early. shaking them. Like I say, they wasn't I, I shaking them. Like, 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 just like he said, they wasn't shaking them. That was the best way to ever say it. They definitely had the real day. And they had the they had the dreads where they the, they had the dreads, they had them Rastafarian dreads too, and the other kind. You feel me? So yeah, hell yeah. The world been on them. Don't get it fucked up. I don't want nobody to take this sound by and be like, man, who are you trying to say they were the first one with dreads? Because they'd do that shit. They'd do that to me. They'd do that. You know what I'm saying? I'm just saying we had a big influence. <laughs> yeah, they'd do that shit. <laughs> hey, hey, but hey, but Jesus had them first. How about that? <laughs> Jesus Christ had dreads, huh? Now. I'll sit you down right now and play you a whole list of songs. That nobody's from the Bay. Uh, it'll be some Tiger songs. It might be some some YG. It'll be some uh, Rich the Kid, Migos, them beats, them beats two, two, two two chains. I mean, it, it list is long. Yo Gotti, and it's all hyphy songs. Uh, Drake. Yeah. And it's the hyphy ain't going nowhere. It's a vibe that it happened and it's happening. And I think it it, it comes from. I could take you back to like some early Too Short, some early E40, and it's hyphy. It's the same beat, Mr. Flamboyant. Like it's hyphy. Like we've been Ooh, doing it. It's Mr. just, it just, yeah, it just got you a don't name. Know nothing for about that, y'all know nothing about that. Man. <laughs> yeah, come on, man, it's hard. Yeah. Well, I be telling people the Bay is like its own little world. You know what I mean? And like, and and, and when Little John went out there, he got a small taste of it. But like, where did? Y'all get your vernacular from the way you pronounce stuff, do stuff, the way you move, just your whole swag. Forty, you've always been known for creating words. Like, where did all that kind of wordplay come from? Top of the line, why ain't call us Rossi? It's natural, like an afro. This shit, this shit is embroidered in us. You know what I'm saying? And we got, we got this. We got. Don't get it fucked up. We got the South in us. You know, my daddy from Mississippi. You understand me? My granddad, my mama's daddy and mama. They're from Louisiana. They're from Bernice, Louisiana. You understand what I'm saying? Shit like that. So it's like we got like, you know, I, we got we got Richmond. The Richmond folks, like I always talk about Richmond because, you know, man, when you talk about with the, got the South in them that ain't going to never leave, that's Richmond, man. They, they, hey, man. Hey, man. You know what I'm saying? Richmond. Yeah. <laughs> they, they, you know, I'm yeah. telling you because I was laced by Richmond. I was laced by Richmond cats too. Like street niggas. Like street niggas from Richmond. Like bona fide. Yes, them and rappers. Shout, shout out to Magic Mike and Calvin T. You feel what I'm saying? 
So it's like they came out. I always say, man, some of these rich niggas come out here, a nigga with permanent, they came out the womb with permanent gold teeth, nigga. That's how South Philly <laughs> is. You know? Yeah, they, yeah. Because <laughs> they popped that shit. They got gang, you know what I'm saying? So this whole Bay, I think what it is, a lot of people, a lot of the grandparents and stuff like that moved to the Bay. They went to Alameda Air Force Base. They went to Travis Air Force Base. They went to Mare Island. They went to all through all, all through the Bay and set up shop because they was in the military. The, the, you know what I'm saying? The, the, the grandparents, you know what I mean? The, the, the grandfathers. And so they moved their family out here. And, that's, and you put all that shit together, and the Bay just got a unique way of things. Don't get it fucked up. It's not, it's just a mixture of, you know, and I always say the town is like, you understand, know, the, the nucleus. They are, they, 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 the, they, the, they, the center of the Bay. Like, they the ones, they create a lot of shit. The town is Oakland. You know what I'm saying? And I give them that. And I've, all, I've you know, I got a lot of my gang because they was living a, we from a small city. We ganged up. Don't get it fucked up because we got the game from everywhere. Me and Mac Dre and all of us, we got the game from everywhere, but we all had our own thing. So we got we got the whole bay in us, me and Mac Dre. We had the whole bay in us. You know what I'm saying? We had Oakland, Richmond, Frisco, East Palialto. You understand me? Um, you know what I'm saying? The whole, the whole bay. You feel me? So so on and so forth. And and, and we had us. So the bay is something pull up, special, If bro. you pull up on Hunter's Point, you pull up on Fillmore, you pull up. Uh, West Oakland, East Oakland, uh, dip somewhere like East Palo Alto, fucking Vallejo, Park, you know, Richmond. It's all these slick ass, slick niggas that just old niggas that's older than us that always was just cool as fuck, whether they was yeah. hustling or pimping or just some old, like he said, old Southern nigga that just, you know how South nigga just be cool. Yeah. Like the nigga... Yeah. Nigga don't even gotta have no money, but the nigga got cool, and it, it, we just we got that shit. And come on, you know what I'm saying? We and motherfucker, you gotta have you, you know, motherfucker walk up on, hey, what's up, bro? You gotta say your your, your next thing gotta be something slick. And you we know, little niggas singing that shit like motherfucker tell me what's up, hey, what's up, bro? Oh man, sometimes me always you. <laughs> you gotta be ready. You gotta have your mouth. You gotta be ready. You gotta be ready. That's that shit I'm talking about, though. For, uh, Forty, you be saying some shit though. The beat it, it, it make you think after you hear it because you didn't really hear it the first time. Like you gotta, what did he just say? So, so here it is, Matt. You know I'm one of them dudes, man. You know I can throw you five ounces a game, but you only might catch two of them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? It's gonna go over their head like an umbrella. I'm telling you, like, yeah. like right now, one of my newest ones. I, I, I was, I made this up probably about a month ago. I was like, somebody asked me, man, what you, what you been up to? Oh, I say, man, same story, different worry. You know, it's just a mixture <laughs> of things. Up. You know what I'm saying? It's like it's just a mixture of things. Like the grit don't quit, man. It's like this is what we do. We specialize in vernacular and slang and game and all that shit. You my, know what I'm saying? My, fa- my favorite new one, bro. My favorite new one is uh, <laughs> you, be, you be sliding it so smooth. Is the pandemic. He said it's just so the, the first time he said that shit before we got on air, I said, "You said what? The plan? I like that. Hey, I need I need to be in one of them Moscato commercials. Forty next time, let me know. I got. I'm gonna send y'all. I'm gonna send y'all a care package, man. I'm gonna give y'all all the motherfucking alcohol, bro. Y'all gonna have a bar. Hello. Right yes, now, sir. I'm on. I'm on Earl Stevens watermelon. I didn't see. Oh. I didn't oh. see. Oh, okay. Speaking of, uh, what, what you want? What you want? what you want? What you want? I need all the. I need all. That watermelon. That watermelon. That watermelon. That watermelon sounds good, man. What you want? What you want? What you want? You want Kuiper Bell bourbon? Eight, it, it aged for eight years. You want Kuiper mm. Bell top? This is top drawer, bro. What you want? Mm. You gotta tell me what y'all want. Do you want, want the up. cotton oh. candy? Do you do you want the Earl Stevens cotton candy sparkling wine? Cotton yeah, candy I, just, I just want the wine. I just want wine. I just want wine. That's you all want I need all wine. wine? Oh, so all you wine. also, so you want all wine? So you want what I was drinking on versus? You want the mango schiznato? Yeah, that's schiznato. <laughs> Hello. Yeah, that's schiznato. <laughs> hey, um, hey, you brought it up. Hey, speaking of versus, they got two short right was... here. This two short right here. Two short love this. He love the blue lagoon. I gotta go get that that damn oil. <laughs> Slurricane, man, it's slur- Slurricane is very effective. 
Hey, speaking, <laughs> of, <laughs> hey, speaking of verses, y'all shut verses down. The numbers were crazy. The energy was crazy. I remember I was in Texas for AAU, and we had just played a game and went to dinner. I had it on for all the parents to watch. Y'all shut that shit down. How, how much fun? Was this as fun there as y'all made it look? Because y'all started drinking and got wet. Shorts started changing <laughs> outfits on us. All kinds of shit. 40 started dancing got, like Usher. Hey, hey man, like, I got on my yeah. seat. I got out my I got out, I, I, I got out my seat when I seen Shaw go put the uh, with the green Oakland A's jacket on. Yeah. I got out my seat. I got out Yo. my seat there, bro. I got out my seat. Hey, they was entertained <laughs> like they entertained us. It wasn't just throw your song against my song. They was real showman gamesmanship out there. So, how did that come about? And how much fun did y'all have doing that? First of all, let me that tell you this, man. Original man. Short, when short get going, this nigga comedy, bro. Let, <laughs> let me tell you. One time, one time we was in Detroit, right? One time we in, we in, we at the MGM Casino, and we just now walking in. Short was like, nigga, I got some pussy out there, nigga. He just, and I said, okay, Short, we'll talk to you later. And he just, and then he just slid off. He had a rental car, and he just slid, he, before he slid off, he just, bitch, and just slid off on us. I say, this nigga is so <laughs> I say, this nigga Short is thawed. So once you get Short going, I'm telling you, the dude is, and we did this many times in our life in the studio and together anytime we gather up. But go ahead, tell him, tell him how we did this shit, Short. Tell him how it all, how it, we did it, this it shit. It was just a, uh, no, no rehearsal. No, no talking points. No, let's let's not discuss what we gonna do and what we ain't gonna do. Let's just go out there and do what we do. And I knew that forty was, you know, something was. He was gonna get a special something. Something was gonna be, you know, he was gonna have moments. He was gonna bring it and it like he did. And I was like, I gotta have some shit. A whole bunch of exclusive game do. fits. I gotta have some things Definitely. to do so I can have the exclusive game. So I can keep up with the water and shit. Now you know, I, I just knew that if we rehearsed it or if we told each other what we was gonna do, it wasn't gonna be right. And then the other part is everybody loved. I I was you know I I was invested in the GZ Gucci thing because I remember when they was homies and we was all hanging out and I just you know the Atlanta days and and I kind of I look I look at that as one of my my personal hip hop tragedies of Gucci and Jeezy not spending them fifteen met, hey, years sure, together. I'm gonna let you. I'm gonna let you talk, but I'm gonna. I want to say this. It's a trip because I met Gucci and Jeezy the same day, two thousand two. I was on. Um, we 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 were shooting a video with Blue Da Vinci. Uh, we was on uh, uh -huh. Big Meach bus in Atlanta. You understand me? So shout uh, free Big Meach, man. You understand me? But I'm just saying, I got I got songs. I got great songs with with Jeezy, Young Jeezy, and Gucci Man. I fuck with them both. I got number love for them brothers, and I, I was, it, it just it just made me feel so good, man, when I seen them dudes, you know, you know, kind of patch it up in front of the world and um, and show showmanship, man, and show uh -huh. show the world that things can be, you know, things can come out, you know, pretty good, man, if you if you if you if you if you open minded, you know what I'm saying? So I'm gonna let you get back to it, short. Yeah, but a lot of verses. Um had that battle element where it came from, you know, the first verses, the early ones was like, let's battle and see, you know, you know, whether it's poking for fun or in that case of Jeezy and Gucci, everybody was watching because it was so real. Like it was it's just, you know, the real elements of it. So uh, we knew about all the verses. I seen Jill and Erica. We seen it, you know, all of them, you know, the, the, the style it was going. And the one thing we was like, well, man, we, we repping that bay, bro. So, you know, right off the rip, we got to be different than anything that ever happened in verses ever. That's the first thing and foremost. So, we uh, they came up with that. Uh, that was you and Larry and all them, and Swiss and all them. They came up with the let's celebrate the bay. And I was I was kind of like not really on board any kind of way you looked at it. I was like, I, I'm a fan of verses, but I don't want to be, I don't want to battle nobody like too short against somebody. I don't want to do that. And then when they, they devised the, the the um the concept of the, the celebrate the bay and tell the story of the bay I'm like now that I can That's get different. with and then right. all we had to do was um fellowship a little bit of tequila right some uh, we had some slur cane up there it was y'all was y'all hey, was on one for real you know <laughs> we just kind of like a hey we just went there man like I I, I literally like. I haven't I haven't watched it back, but I literally like enjoyed that. That's, that's a moment in my memory. It's like a really good time I had. Like it was fun. Well, I mean, you yeah, can sing was. along Man, literally. 
Like I said, we's at the. T- I forgot what restaurant, Jack. What's the? Re- I- I'm forgetting. It's pissing me off when we go to Dallas. The little. Uh, what's the big restaurant? It's it's in Houston. It's the seafood and all the. the Papa big- True Lux. True Lux. True Lux. No, oh. no, no, no. Papa Do's. Papa, Papa Do's. No. Yo, so we took the home Papa team. Oh, Papa, Papa Do's. Oh, yeah. man. How did I forget Hell that? Though? Yeah. So we took the we, we took the kids' whole team there. So the kids are at one table, parents are at the other table. I had my phone set up and I put it in the <laughs> cup and it was blasting. Everybody was singing and we was dancing like we had a really good time. Though we got fucked up listening to everything. Everybody got <laughs> drunk, but we had like a real good time. Just like I said, they brought but such great memories. The time from the beginning to the end, you could sing along with everything, man. So we definitely wanted to salute y'all for that, man, because y'all definitely blessed us with that. Yeah, man, for real, appreciate that Thank one. You. Yeah. You know we, you know we did before. Thank y'all, man. You know we did before we even got it started. We prayed. Mm. Oh, man. You know, oh, man. you know. I, I, I'm, I'm here to encourage you. I'm not trying to act like I'm a saint or anything. I was raised by Granddaddy Thurman. You know what I'm saying, um, Reverend Thurman. You know Charles Thurman. That's that's Uncle Saint Charles' daddy, my mama daddy. You know what I'm saying. He was a preacher, 60 years in the game. You know, died when he was 82 years old. You know what I'm saying. But I'm saying I got that in me, and I pray into any situation like if before you even have a conversation even if it's some street stuff or whatever it is or any difficult situation if if you got to make a um a choice you know you pray on it period in life in yeah. general and that's yeah. what we did we this was this didn't have nothing to do with none of that but it was like let's pray on it for a successful night ask god to put the blood of jesus around us the blood of jesus around our family at home let this be a successful event and let us all get back safe in jesus name amen and that's what we did and it became one of them ones and then me and Short went to go pick up a bag after that. <laughs> As you sure should. Tell you right. that. <laughs> <laughs> Before, hey, so during, and after. Of late, not to change the tone, but I think this person's important just in the whole game overall. We've seen Dre in the hospital. Obviously, we, we, we wish him a speedy recovery. Through your guys' eyes and, and seeing this whole journey of music, how important is Dre's path in, the, in, in, in music? Man. He was, be, you know, he was before he was before us. I, I believe it was, was it the world class wrecking crew. Yep. Um, mm-hmm. You know, uh, was it turn off the lights today? Before I turn off the lights, was that no? That wasn't no. <laughs> Michelin. Who was that? That was yeah, Michelin. That, that, that okay, was, that I used to, world class crew. I used to slap the hell out of uh, Michelin's uh, album. I'm serious. Like I had a blue, I had a blue. But that was her singing that before she was time. famous. She was singing that song on world class wrecking crew. See, okay, I'm, I'm not, okay, I'm in there then. I'm in there. So, you know, like Dr. Dre, I, you know, I'm gonna tell you right now, man. That dude is iconic. He means so much. You know, as I get older, I get wiser. You look back, you like, man, dude, you know, dude, really brought a lot to hip hop overall, not just the West Coast overall. You know, and he's still setting examples. I mean, this man is, you know, pretty much a billionaire, man. You know, what I'm saying this man. Gave up a lot to get to it, and, and and God blessed him with way more, you know. You know, yeah, Dre, know, so Dre is really look at that. Dre is really, really, really important, man. From a um, uh, you know, just cultural standpoint of how he is one of the biggest in the game, and you want to like brag on your region. You know, I got Puff Daddy, I got Baby Cash Money, whatever. You know, we got Dr. Dre, we got you know, West Coast. Hip hop uh, legend is a, a fucking billionaire. You know what I'm saying? Made it off hip hop, so the dream is there. So I'm just saying, um, and on the, from a technical standpoint, you got Dr. Dre in the game even before Too Short and fucking Ice T. Like he's out there making records, and he's the nigga who early on brings you Easy E, then follows that up with. Ice Cube, Ren, and they come as a group called NWA. And then at the same time, I was on tour with NWA when they went on on the um, Straight Outta Compton tour. I was on that tour because I had Freaky Tales out and Easy was my homie. And um, while we on tour, Dr. Dre and Easy dropped DOC's album. And while he's on tour, he's nobody. And by the end of the tour, he's somebody. You know what I'm saying? And he come home and like he's famous. Like he got the hottest album out. I, I, I have forgot that story. I talked to DLC and he reminded me. He's like, while I'm on tour, the tour ends. And as it ends, I'm the hottest artist out at the moment. And I mean, Drake later on comes. He brings you, uh, you know, a, 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 a large part of Tupac that we love. 
you know, I don't, I, I don't know if Dre did all that Tupac death row stuff, but I'm saying like just jumping off California was enough when Pac came home to just that Dre stamp. And it was just, you know, the vibe of uh, Dre, Dre gave us um, uh, 50 Cent, Eminem, like just... Just, they what, gave just, us just Snoop Dogg, gifts. right? Snoop, Snoop Dogg, Snoopy, Snoopy Dogg, mm -hmm. Snoopy Dogg, and he the gave dog us beats by Dre. Like he just, Come just, on. I mean, he's just important, man. That's all it is. Like he really is important. I could, I'm gonna tell you Definitely. one thing. Uh, we used to take the Chronic, and it was like a few songs on there, like probably like three songs that we used to use listening to the first Chronic album, and we would play, we would mix our songs, and then we would play Dre's song. And then we play our song, and we go, if the shit don't sound close to Dre's song, mm. we got to go back in the studio and mix it some more. Like, we, like mm -hmm. we got it. Like, like literally, I made, I made a lot of records, like, using the chronic as the, as the, a reference. the bar. Yeah, Dre Man, set so the bar. That, that's how important Dre is. Yeah. That's real. That's real. Absolutely. Uh, you spoke on, short, you spoke on Easy e can, can, can you sp speak to your relationship and, and, and what would that, what, you guys are both young in the game and coming up. What was that relationship like? Well, you know, in the hip hop game, man, we we um we like to have the moments where you the hottest cat of the summer or you got a banger that's an anthem. You know what I'm saying? We we we, we thrive for them moments. And <clears throat> being easy, and it was like summer of '87, pushing into '88. We had Boys in the Hood and Freaky Tales was out at the same time. And it was like, undeniably, the trunk was just, we owned the trunks while them two records was out. We just had that moment. And that was, um, <clears throat> he was doing the Easy e solo thing, but they were prepping for, you know, getting ready for NWA. So when NWA came out, that thing just, just blew up straight out of Compton, just blew up. And I mean, I was out there on that same level, you know, in that same audience. And Easy was like, I'm going to take this dude too short with me. So I got the call. He's like, he's like, you want to go on tour? I'm like, I've never been on tour. I'm like, hell yeah, I want to go was, on that tour. Was your first, that was your first time touring? Man, that was the first time going into arenas and it's sold out. And it's the, you know, the, the light come on. And it's like, oh, my God, this whole stadium. And so, yeah, that's first time. So, you know, um, yeah, I credit e Easy for that. And I, I went on that tour. When I got out on tour, I had dropped uh, Life is Too Short, the album. And... It was at like 300,000 sales. When the tour ended, I was at 800,000 sales just from the tour. Another, another, you know, 500,000. Then I get off tour and the thing sells like another 500,000. Like just right, like it just, like the, that whole, you know, connecting with Dre and Easy like that, just, it just changed everything. That was the beginning of my friendship with Ice Cube, which is a, a lifelong friendship that's, you know, the, you know, just the same as always was right now. And it's just, uh, you know, that that was that moment where you, you know, you, you know, get out in the world. And it's the, it's the first time, you I'm, you know, I've come home. I, I got a Mercedes in a house with a pool, all, you know, all that type of shit. So that was that moment in life. And and Easy was, um, he was like a real, you know, like, I, I let's talk about, you say, how important is Dre? How important mm. is Easy? Because mm. mm. Easy. Talk to him. Easy goes and gets the bag that brings Dre out of world class record crew where he wasn't happy or you know Lon I, I talked to Lonzo in his in his version but Dre clicked up with Easy they started doing that thing Easy was grinding in the streets putting that money together for them to uh, make that move you know and his free agent pickup I mean if you just think you if you put Dr Dre on the Easy E family tree. I mean that tree is tremendous, man. With, with the ice cubes and the bone thugs and the DOCs and above the law and Michelle and and <laughs> and it goes to Eminem and Fifty Cent and anybody you want to connect to anything that came from the Easy E <laughs> right. branch. The man you take away Easy E and none of that happens. What is what? I mean, like like for real though. So he had the, he had that vision, man. And he was um, you know, he was he was a business guy and he was. He was a, when I seen him in action, he was a short dude, but he always stayed strapped. And he always, I've never seen him like in the movie when they, he had to be scary and whatever in the movie. I've never seen that shit. I never seen. Never saw that side. Yeah. See, I heard, yeah, hey, I, I heard that too. I, they said he wasn't backing down to nobody. 
Yeah, I didn't see that. I've seen him a lot of times, like, buck up on people. And, and like, what? Like, I, I so, you know, I know he was really in the streets. I talked to guys who was like, I used to uh, serve with him. I used to serve him what he had. I seen they, they like the nigga really was out there. So, um... Uh, he had a lot of kids. He had. He, we was on tour. He had. More, he had more bitches than all of us, like like by far. <laughs> like, he nigga was a super player, and you know he was a baller, man. That's so what's you up, know, man. Rest in peace, E. So y'all yeah. both just recently uh, dropped a bundle album. Forty for you is your twenty seventh. Short for you, your twenty second. Talk Something to us like about that, that project. The oh, new, oh, new oh, man. Come on, man. Black. Terms and um, conditions. Yeah, yeah. So, 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 um, you know, we did this, we did the verses on the 19th. And we, you know, that Friday was a good day to drop music. I had one, I had an a album plan. Actually, it was going to be an EP, Curb Commentator, uh, Channel 3. Uh, so I was like, you know what, let me throw a curveball in and let's postpone that and just call it, you know, stand me terms and conditions. You understand me? And then I'll, I'll resume, um, you know, the curb commentator later on. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And so, you know, Short was like, you know, uh, I'm dropping two. And I was like, let's put it in the, and, and so, so uh, who was that? Who Galen? Galen had said, let's put it, let's, why don't y'all put it in a bundle? You know what I'm saying? I'm like, that's, that's just, that, that makes sense. That You know, that way we can just, you know, we get on each other's songs like we always do. You know what I'm saying? And we put it go, together. Go, like go half on the, on the PR campaign. Uh, yeah. There's a whole lot of there's a whole lot of pluses to bundling the albums together. But then it was also like as the verses, and we took the opportunity to kind of like, if you listen to the projects, they really it's really like a ode to the bay. Like it's real. They real bayish. Like real managed bass style and that was done on purpose on, on my side for show for show like really just trying to make it like I didn't even I wasn't even trying to get no like really like commercial vibe I just wanted like some real street bay bump to go with verses and then you know we we got the Mount Westmore project coming I can't Mount wait to is gonna be huge man Mount Westmore is gonna be huge that's gonna be yeah. huge this is well I'm this excited is, uh, I, I want to see, I didn't mean to cut you off short, but I want to get up out of this mother fan, motherfucking pandemic so that so that group can go on tour. That's what I want. I want to see that live. Yes, I, you know, hearing it's going to be great, but seeing it in person is going to be incredible. Yes, sir. And you know and I want to hear you know Curb Commentator. I cannot wait to hear Curb Commentator, babe. The com <laughs> Curb com Commentator, I'm, I'm back on it. Like, I'm, I'm right. Look, the grip don't quit with me every day I'm in this, this new deal. You understand me? And I'm going crazy. And, uh, uh, I just feel like if I'm in my right mind and I got my life, health, and strength, and I got God on my side, I'll be able to make music forever. As long as I'm in my right mind and I got my life, health, and strength. That's very important. Right mind, life, health, and strength. That means a lot. I'm that not, way, I, right. I'm, my That's creativity and everything else is going to be there. Adaptability. It's, 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 come on. Exactly, man. And, I, and, I, and I'm in the loop like a hula hoop. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, I, I ain't out the frame. I'm in the game. Hello, mm -hmm. you know. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> so you got y'all have spoken earlier, but what is the the, the 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 transition into business been like for you guys? I mean, saying you know, black business owner these days are very important. For you got a lot of stuff going on in 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 the, in the alcohol space. Talk to us for a second about what that what that means to you and how important that is to you. Okay, this is important for me right now to actually plug in this phone right now. Plug let me <laughs> plug it in for I don't want it to die on me. Well, I'm talking right. to y'all, so I'd rather have I'd rather have a me messed up speaker when I'm gonna put you on the loudspeaker, right quick. Hold on, while I talk to you. You understand what I'm saying? Okay, can y'all hear me now? Can you hear me? Yeah, you sound you you sound like you're calling from jail, but we can hear you. What if I put the what nah? Hey, you know, like you know, hey, you know what he sound like? You know what he sound like? He sound uh, like he sound like he sound like on the intro, one love. When old boy called him, when the old boy called yeah, him, about, <laughs> hey, check yeah. it out. Look, look, look at this ghetto shit. Look at this guy. This should play a partner, man. man. <laughs> can, can you hear me now? Yeah. Go ahead. This is some ghetto shit. Look at the look at the look at the screen. <laughs> He's on this phone. Nigga. Crazy. Well, man. What you know, we make a way out of no way. Oh, it's all, and the ghetto is oh, always oh. a substitute way. You know? Now we sounding cool now? Yeah, we can hear you. Hello. So um was we talking about some was we talking about some um what was we talking about? Um 
black me business me black, bl bl black business owner in in your company oh for sure for sure for sure for sure hey man look i hey man you can go to my instagram right now i just like to display certain things to show people that i ain't just know you understand me i ain't i ain't late like a uh, holiday freight you know what i'm saying like i've been on my entrepreneur by black you know black excellence this that, and the third you know show, trying to show and prove trying to show people that you can be an entrepreneur at a young age you know, you gotta stay. I was down there in my in my in, in, in my teens. I was like like fresh out of nineteen when I had the clothing store at, at, uh, called New Fad Clothing. Me and me and D shot. Matter of fact, I was I was eighty out nineteen eighty nine. You know what I'm saying? So me and D shot, my brother, we we went and got a clothing store on Solano Avenue. We bought we went to the Garment District, bought clothes. We ordered from you know back then it was like um, Carl Kanai. You know, like, you know, cross colors, those kind of, a lot of rayon stuff, like jeans, spray painted jeans, and, and, uh, what you call them? Um, there's a whole <laughs> bunch of different clothes. So we, hey man, you, you, you was a fashion mogul, man. I didn't know this part. Yeah, I had a clothing <laughs> store. I was a young mustache from the soil, from that shit. You understand me? And everybody, and, and everybody knew it. You know what I'm saying? And, and, but I knew how to, I knew what I was doing, you know. We had we had real fixtures come through there, you know, and spend money with us and whatnot. It was beautiful, and um, you know, we just so happened that I take my little bread that I make on that and go walk down three, four. Um, okay, so you have you had the coat, you had the check cashing uh, store right next door to us. First you had first you had Davenport. They was on our left. Then you had, <laughs> then you had that Davenport is a, um, that's a, that's a, uh, that's, they do taxes and stuff. They do a lot of celebrity taxes because they used to bring Raiders through there and everything to our store. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, wow, these dudes, these, these dudes, crazy, have it. They, you know what I'm saying? Shout out to Dwight Dav Davenport and my, and my, and, and my, and my accountant Keith Towns, you understand know me? For, for 30 something years. You understand what I'm saying? I'm giving it to you straight, not fake, right? So look. <laughs> <laughs> so look, so then next to next door to us at New Fat Clothing, we had the check that it was a check cashing center, right? Then next to that, you understand me? I forgot what was next to that. I forgot. I think it was. I don't know. I don't think it was a laundry, but I think it was like a little. I don't know. I don't know what that was. But right next to that was Rich Arts Barbershop. Okay. <laughs> then next to next 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 to Rich Arts Barbershop, it was it was um it was Studio Tone Studio. It was Studio, studio oh, with Tone, man. I wish I could say shopping mall. Huh? Yeah, I ain't, remember, remember Pimp C said that at Studio with Tone, man. I wish I could stay. I got holler at Master P because we got <laughs> money to make. Come on, man. Stu Come studio on. Tone Come had on, them man. beats, man. He had them beats. That boy had Come them on. beats. So we go to so Studio Tone. So Studio Tone. So I take my little my little bread I made at the clothing store and I go put a little deposit down, right? I say, Tone, check game. I'm gonna need like four hours. That's all back then. That's all I needed was four hours because I had so much <laughs> gas. I had so much game to release because I was a young mustache, you know? And I'm going there and knock out three or four songs, you know? So that's how, and, oh and next thing you know, God. we just kept whooping their ass. We start beating their ass without the belt. You know what I'm saying? Without the belt, you know? And, and that's all. Then, then you start hearing E40 and the click. Oh, you, you start hearing about us. You know what I'm saying? So that's how that all went. Then oh, here I am, man. years later, you know, I didn't have Fat Burgers, clubs, all kind of wing stops, all kind of stuff like that. Now I'm selling adult beverages. You understand me? I'm doing, you know, I'm in, a, I'm in 45 different tech companies. You understand me? I'm giving it to you straight, not fake. You, you understand me? You know what I'm saying? You know, hey, I, I, there's so many things I can display to you, but I'm in the food and beverage. That's my main thing right now, food and beverage. You feel me? So be on the lookout for the Goon with the Spoon book. You know what I'm saying? A <laughs> uh, 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 cooking show, Goon with the Spoon products, co-packing. Also, um, I'm involved with the Lumpia Company. I'm co-owner of the Lumpia Company. You can go to the town and find that because we're going to be co-packing that too. You'll find that in like your Walmarts and your, you know what I'm saying, your Costco's. Your Safeways and you know your your local supermarkets, man. You understand me? We global. We gonna be global, not local. You understand me? So we gonna spread that thing, man. You know it got me started, man. I'm right now. I'm on this watermelon. You shouldn't have never got me started, man. It's not good to get me started. Cause I talk your ear off. You know I'm from the bay. I like to hear myself talk. Hello. I, I need to get oh, some man. of that watermelon. I need to get some of that watermelon. Hey, short. Oh my uh, god, the I'll, watermelon I'll, goes I'll... so crazy. Outside of music, short, what kind of stuff you into? Oh man, well you know, uh, you know, I got like, it's just a, uh, it's 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 just a, a, a the same thing with everybody else, man. We're just it's just shit on the table. We just do it, we do it. I can sit here and run down the list, 
what all is going on, man. But I'm telling you, at the top of the list is Mount Westmore. That's that's what we working on every day. I'm sitting there right now, about to push up to uh, I'm about to push over the Snoop spot right now. We we uh finalizing the mix on um on the last few songs for the first wave. So it's it's probably gonna be like three four waves, but. You know the Westmore is at the top of the list. I can I can get run you down the soda pops and the merch stuff. Exotic the, pop, yeah. And the, and the and the weed we just we just launched the whole weed line and and the, you know the the, the we adding the pre run. I mean the shit goes forever. Like you're just a hustler, man. I I can't really I I don't really like a you know I don't I, I, every day I wake up, man. It's like I don't ever sit like for what you say, Earl. Don't let the grass grow under your feet. Yeah, you can't grass. let grass grow under your feet, man. Yeah, yeah. So I, that's 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 my style right there. Just uh, never look down and see that grass growing around you, man. We keep it moving, keep it moving, keep keep it hustling, man. All right, man. Grit, we appreciate in other in other words, the grit don't quit. Mm, dig that. We appreciate your but time. If, we, hey, but we, if, if you do want to tap into twoshortstore.com, that's cool, man. You can you can go it. get a lot of good shit, man. Plug it at in. the store, man. You know what I'm saying? It's it's, it's a wonderful place to go. Get you a, get you a bitch button. <laughs> <laughs> For shout out. Hey, we go uh, we go hit we go we gonna let y'all get uh, going in a second. We gonna hit you with some quick hitters. First thing to come to mind. Answer, Jack. Take it. If you guys put together a dream team tour, in addition to yourselves, name three artists or group. Past the present, that will be with you. That you'll bring along. Um, I say one, and you say one. For short, all right. Uh, I'm, I'm, a, I'm gonna say. You said a group too. I'm gonna say the click. Ooh, okay. I'm gonna take Snoop Dogg the Dog Pound. I'm gonna pull up. I'm gonna take my guys who I got right now. I'm gonna call Ice Cube. These niggas that sell out, and I'm gonna call E40. We're gonna get up out of here. Let's yeah, go. yeah. We gonna yeah. keep the pushing, man. We're gonna, we gonna sell out everywhere we go. Easy money. Damn I think we man. don't really need no. I'm not trying to sound arrogant, but I think I mean, come on, man. You got you got four of your favorite rappers that can really pack. We can pack the house easily a few times. We could do two shows a night. I really feel that way. You got E40. You got no particular order. Well, no, fuck it. We gonna do an order. We got fucking. We got Snoopy Dog. I call him Snoopy <laughs> Dog. Crack me up because when I was in that Amsterdam, some some cats came up to me. Some some Asian guys. They was like. Snoopy dog, Snoopy dog. I'm like, I'm not Snoop dog. Nothing <laughs> like what's, what's, what's the other one, man? What's the other? What's the next one? What's the next one? Next question is, uh, who in the game right now? Young rapper, one young rapper. Each of y'all, uh, you know, are checking for right now. One young rapper that I'm trying to see come up, man, is my little hometown homie Guap Dad, man. I I, I recently worked with him, uh, Guap Dad four thousand, and uh. And I like his work ethic. I like his uh his momentum he building and stuff. You know, I, he's I, from I wish the brother uh, he's from the town, man. man. West Oakland, man. I wish your brother a lot of success, man, because he's real talented, you know. Yes, and he he doing good, man. He's doing real good. So, you know, shout out to the hometown. Yes, sir. If you guys played three on three three on excuse me. If you guys put together a three on three basketball against each other, who would be on your teams? Both of y'all picked the three on three squad. For us rappers are like real basketball players. Basketball players. And we were, and we was the coach. Yep, y'all got to pick three players each. Okay, I got mine. I got mine. I got Steph Curry. I got he Kevin Durant. Warriors. <laughs> man, hold on, man. Back up like a sea crab. I got, <laughs> I got Steph Curry, Kevin Durant, and we got to have some defense too. We got to have some defense. Well, they got defense too. And Clay Thompson, fuck it, we good. Oh, you going with all war? That's my team. So, this is a sick team. Who, who, who you going I'm sorry. To get to, I'm sorry. It's the, I'm sorry. It's the Warriors. I'm sorry. The, oh, you know, I'm sorry, but that's what it is. It is. Come on. Who gonna argue with that? Who got a problem you, with that? What who you got, got short? Problem with that? Man, I, I just uh, if if you're gonna go get uh, lights out and just everybody just shoot your lights out, I'm gonna have to just go get a. Uh, uh, I need like three players that like fight really good because we're gonna have to get out there and rough them boys up. So. <laughs> they can't fuck with I, the we people. Ain't, we ain't even kick. thinking like offense, man. We thinking like just just uh, all fucking fouls. Me, me stacking. <laughs> that's run shady. That's that shady shit. That, that shut shady. down defense, that's man. We gotta shut them boys down, man. Can't shut nah, down you know who? I, you right know, you know, I'm gonna I'm go. I'm gonna go get a. Uh, uh, like I always, uh, I always got to roll with Dame Lillard, man. That's my guy, man. I look yep. at, 
Shout out I, I, I love his game. About Dang. Damn. See, they got to give me more. They got to give me more. More. Just three. They just gave me three. I, lo- I love his I, game, I'm man. I'm biased because I'm a warrior. That's all. But I love Dame, man. That's, that boy vicious you know, uh, in the vocal booth and on the on, and on the court. Hello. Yes, sir. Sure is. Like like that there. Um, um, I, I would say uh, AD too, man. Uh, because he, he's a uh, yeah, probably. Uh, Dame down AD, there. With, who's your third? Your team is stacking up pretty well. Yeah, yeah, and then I um I need Take like a uh, like a bully, man. I need like a uh. Take it too like long. a um, like a like a sharp, sharp, sharp shooter, like, like, like a one of them boys on like Milwaukee or something, man, like a Middleton, like a sh- somebody who hit the knock the knock down shots and got like a little 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 girth, you know? A big dude. That, is that a good look? Get a little Tatum. Yeah. Little Tatum. Forty. You can't be just picking all the Warrior All Stars, man. Come on, man. We're just trying to make <laughs> this interesting, bro. <laughs> all right. So look, who should we have on All the Smoke? Rapper wise, it got to be somebody I have access to. Got to be somebody I have Jigga. access to. I want to hear from Jigga. I want to hear what Jigga thinks yeah. about hey, these hey, days okay. and what's going on. Hit him up, short. I, I ain't gonna be able to hit him up, short. I don't have no hit him contact up short. to Jigga. None of that. So I'm not gonna be able to help you with that part. But <laughs> I just say that'd be great you to see him on I, I got nothing but love for Jigga. I really do for Jay Z. For real, I sincerely do. Absolutely. Hook us up, short. What you got, short? Man, Jay, I don't know who you call to get in touch with Jay, man. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who you call. You, got, you, 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 you probably get a, a Texas call in through Beyonce and, and uh, go through and the Bun, Houston route then. Yeah, and yeah. I'm, 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 I'm going to hit Bun up, see if he can make it happen. So, yeah, go to, tech, go to Texas route. Right? You, you probably get in there quicker. Hey, um, man, uh, who, who, who should you get, like, for real? Have y'all had a uh, Killer Mike yet? No. Uh uh-uh. uh. We we, we K- Killer Mike. Have. He got a lot of Killer game, Mike man. He got a lot of like. Mm. He got like a lot of right now, you know, opinions and and, and, and logic and shit. So I that's who I would say. That's a good yep. call. That's shout a good out call, Killer so Mike. That's a really good call. Hey man, but we appreciate you guys' time, man. We lost track of time. I think we've been doing this shit for like two hours, but man, thank yeah, you. Yeah, appreciate time. y'all, man. Best of luck with uh Mount Westmore. We can't wait to hear it. Be a part of it. Yes, sir. Um, man, thank y'all. That's a wrap. Special episode with Living Legends, E40 and Too Short. Uh, you can catch all the smoke on Showtime Basketball all YouTube the and the iHeart platform, Black Effects. We'll see y'all next time. We got to do the show. Get out of here. Get out. Killed it. Shut the fuck, Jason. You're stupid. <laughs> stop, stop. Somebody's bougie. Stop. Y'all look crazy. <laughs> Congratulations, gentlemen. Y'all blew up. <laughs> <laughs>